I didn't say he was going to lose the game. You said that. Well, that's, that's why we're arguing, I guess, because I'm right and you're wrong. Um, what? Oh. Look at that move. Queen takes f7. H5 falls with check, and you can resign. Yeah, I don't. He does. I don't want to say I told you so, so I'm not going to. You, you kinda That's like do. what my wife says when she's like, I don't want to point out that I told you this. <laughs> Guess who's back? Back again. again. Danny's, Danny's back. back. With Hess, his friend. Guess, Guess who's back. back. Guess, Guess who's back. back. We didn't even rehearse that. We didn't at all. Dude, we're... So ready for another three and a half hours of Speed Chess Championship action. Who's up next? Let's bring it. Who's, uh, who's behind door number two, Johnny? <laughs> Vladislav Artemyev and Alexandra Grishuk, two of the best chess players in Russia on the planet. The sixth seed is in many ways the underdog in the match. Yeah, it's interesting to see that because he's yep. the high-rated player of the two, but Grishuk has the experience on his side. He's played in uh, many speed chess championship matches. You see his overall record, 4-3. and three. And his where he's favored is the quicker time controls, the 3-plus-1 yep. and the 1-plus-1, one one, and he's a two-game favorite overall. Yeah, it's interesting. Again, the sixth seed is based on the Fide Blitz rankings, but our probability predictors, smarter chess predictions, have Grishuk as a favorite heading into this, and our power rankings – Kind of say why, right? As you just said, Grishik has a 4-3 and three lifetime record. He's been doing this thing for a while, like Levon Aronian, and uh, his overall SEC ranking being number four. Uh, by time control, you look at him right kind of in the middle of the pack, right? Grishik has made it to the semifinals uh, a couple times, but never made it all the way to the promised land in the finals, and uh, we'll see if this is his year. But to start things off, his 2019 SEC campaign has to go through Vatislav Artemyev, and as we look at this young man, Pretty impressive, Robert, his stat sheet. Yeah, and it seems actually like a bad opponent for Grishuk. If you ha if he's traumatized by his recent speeches championship history, he lost to the young uh, young Christoph Duda last Maybe year. Maybe the only person with better hair, hair than <laughs> Vladislav Artemyev is young Christoph Duda. You know, similarly aged, similar strengths. But if you look at those ratings across the board for Artemyev, 2757 classical. He has really just improved greatly as a player. He won in Gibraltar. Mm -hmm. He uh, won the European individual title. He's a member of the Russian national team. And you see his ratings in Rapid and Blitz. Well, he's great across the board. Yep. And his chess.com blitz and bullet are very in line with Alexander Grishuk's. As we now bring up the player card there for Sasha, we see that those guys are separated not by much. If we jump all the way down to the second from the last item, chess.com ratings are within 30 points on both sides. Um, and uh, obviously we know that Alexander Grishuk is also a former World Blitz champion. Uh, so he's played with the best of them. And if we look at our odds calculations, Grishuk has relatively middle of the pack, decent chances. Um, this year, as far as our uh, prediction sheet goes. Um, any Anything jump out to you about these two guys in the first round, Vladislav Artemyev and Sasha Grishuk? You know, Artemyev, it's really hard to kind of pin him down as a fan of his because right. he's so young. His experience playing the best players in the world, not too many games there. Right. And on, on the other hand, Grishuk, he's been one of the best players in the world for so many years now. Yep. Former uh, world number two, was over 2,800. Uh, as you said, former world blitz champion. So th he's extremely well known. And, you know, and he's extremely ready. I think the games are about to begin. These guys have actually been online for some time. And so we expect their match to get underway. The uh, Ferruja Aronian match, if you somehow missed it, was quite the thriller. Levon Aronian moves on to the quarterfinals in the Speech Chess Championship by one game. He staved off a massive comeback from the young man from Iran. But now it is time for Russia to have the spotlight as far as Chess.com's viewers are concerned. We've got the Siberian Elephant. I think that's what it stands for. Yes, I, I believe and, so. And uh, versus Alexander Grishuk, who um, I don't know if he likes elephants, but, you know, <laughs> There's maybe you know, some association there. How could you not like elephants? Well, they're pretty likable, right? <laughs> um, if uh, you were in the call audio before our show went live, you would have had the pleasure of hearing Alexander Grishuk and their ki his kids right before they are way past their bedtime. We, I'm going to talk with Sasha afterwards about his kids' curfew. I mean, <laughs> it's, well, it's pretty late in Russia. 
you know, he he looks really alert right now. Yeah, he does. I, I feel like this goatee situation is Yeah, he's growing new. it out. Yeah. These guys, fun fact, these two guys actually requested to play the later of the two matches in this doubleheader. So if you're wondering, will there be fatigue, they're pretty used to this time. Uh, Vladislav obviously plays in a lot of title Tuesdays, yep. as does Alexander Grishuk. Uh, this isn't far off from the time period that Alexander, I think, feels most alert. Somewhere around 1, 2 a.m. is where he's hitting his prime in Moscow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there you go. So... Uh, what do we got here? Five-minute chess is underway. We have an isolated queen pawn. That's the okay. first thing to note is black has his pawn on d5 that cannot be protected by another pawn. That's what an isolated queen pawn looks like. And b white has done a good job of blockading the pawn. That's what you want to do. You, you don't want to allow that pawn to push and trade off. And and the good thing about having an isolated pawn is that you get open files on the adjacent one. C file and E file. A rook can mm -hmm. go to E eight, take make use of the semi open file. A rook can eventually go to C eight to try to use that file, but the C file is so closed that I wouldn't really uh, focus my attention there for the time being. And yep. you pointed this out the uh two matches ago on say Nakamura against Dobrov the sacrifices in the E3 and F2 squares, mm -hmm. you always have to watch out for that, especially and here with we go E4. with that, right? Knight coming into E4, poking at F2, with the rook also having an eye in the queen and bishop battery already in full force. This is just pretty typical tactics that can occur. And in one way it might have happened if we back up the analysis board, make a useless move for white, would be something like this. If the rook has to leave this square and F2 becomes even more vulnerable, now you really start to look at this being a pressure point that black can take advantage of. So uh, black plays the move knight, sorry, white plays the move knight d2, trying to simplify and get that knight out of his house, wave that Dikembe Mutombo, Mutombo finger, not in my house. Um, and uh, looking at these two guys' avatar pictures, we got the Siberian elephant, Alexander Grisher. One of them is real close. The other one, <laughs> that's not quite a selfie. That's a someone like else. -y. Looks like he's in that's Siberia. So someone else took that picture beside Vladislav, right? That is a someone else for sure. Yep. Far off picture. Um, yeah. But right right now, I think they're sort of feeling each other out in terms of you know what styles they're going to use. And Bishop B six is a good move, putting pressure on D four. But I kind of like the way this is going for Grishuk. Yeah, um, me too. The trade is a good sign, right? You can take with the bishop, and maybe you're punching d4 through and opening that diagonal. Yeah, and this e3 square now is really vulnerable. Right? There are definitely going to be tactics uh, that you always have to be on the lookout for on that square. And if you are um, Artemiev, you have to like your clock management. You're up a minute so far, but mm -hmm. Grishuk is used to that. Even yeah. in classical games, he'll be down to like three minutes left. Ooh, uh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, that was a nice tactic to get the two yeah. bishops. This is wait, bishop takes f6 here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wait, that uh -oh. was an oversight. That, there's wasn't it? no way knight c4 was allowed. If we back this thing up, everyone, we we kind of like the exchange, but knight takes c6, opening the queen to d6 here. That was the that was the main point, right? I I like black initially because I'm just fantasizing about d4 and the light squares, right? Yep, knight c4 is a great tactic. Knight c4, the pawn was pinned to the queen. White wins the bishop pair and then immediately parts with it to double and destroy black's kingside. Uh, this looks like a good start for the young Russian. And uh, where's uh, where's Grishik going to put the king? He's thinking a lot here because maybe he wants rook g5 instead. I think you kind of have to go rook g5. It's king h8 or king f8. Well, king f8 loses the pawn immediately. You can take on h7. And king h8 allows queen h4 hitting f6 and h7 at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you might want to go king f8 to e7, run to the center. Doesn't look very good, honestly. Um, tough yeah, spot to be White in. might even just grab the pawn and say thank you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Come again. And, um, you know, if Rook G5 can hold every onto everything, then it's certainly a move that deserves serious attention because Rook G5 hits the queen. And if you go Queen H4, well, actually, how am I going to protect the pawn anyway? Queen F4 or Queen H4. Um, uh, queen H4, how do I protect H7? I don't well, want to go there. I thought I could play Rook G7 for a second. Forgot that F6 was falling. So here Grishik taking his time, but probably because he doesn't quite know what to do is the king puts on his running shoes. He's going to attempt to escape to the center, but looking pretty good. Yeah. For our team, you have to start things off here. The one thing that's good, in, but then quotes, relatively good for Grishuk is there's no immediate knockout blow. Mm -hmm. And this bishop on c6, as you point out, is very, very strong. At some point, d4, and maybe now, um, is a move that you have to consider. Especially with the, the pin here, yeah. Yep. And this bishop on h7 will go... It'll retreat at some point. And the black king can go from e7. And if it can run all the way to b8... That's a much safer king. That's quite the journey, Frodo. <laughs> but if you can make it there, uh, you know. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Yep, there you go. We're not talking about the Big Apple here. Um, I would love a Big Apple. Big Apple. We're going to get some food later. Don't you worry. <laughs> I'll feed you. I'll feed you, big guy. we got a lot of chess ahead. You keep focused. 
But uh, anyway, we've uh, we've had our second Speed Chess Championship match officially get underway here. A huge thank you to still 13,000 of you that are with us. If you happen to be watching this at the front page of Twitch or on any one of chess.com's embeds, go all the way to our homepage, click the follow button. This is where the biggest events happen, the biggest prizes in chess, the most exciting events, and the most relevant daily questions, Dan. Just been cued by our producer that we actually have a new one for the second match of the day. What has been your favorite moment of the first round of the Speed Chess Championship? There's been a plentiful. Um, and, uh, whoa, I can't wait. Let's see what social media brings us. We've uh, we've asked questions about underdogs. We've asked questions about over-the-board chess punishment, not the medieval kind. Um, but uh, this is a pretty simple one. You've been watching. This is our last first-round matchup of the year. After this, we will have the entire quarterfinals bracket filled. So let us know your favorite moment. Use the hashtag Speed Chess. For this one, I think you got to share it on hashtag Speed Chess on Twitter in order to be relevant. And uh, we're giving away a diamond membership for this one because it's the second match of the day, and well, I'm feeling frisky. And I like one of the answers in the chat, ding changing shirts. <laughs> Which never actually happened, apparently. This camera changed. Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't doing the commentary with you, but I do oh, remember okay. hearing about it. It was crazy. Like, suddenly the lighting of the camera changed, and we were all convinced he changed shirts, and... Anyway, that was something. All right, well, Artemiev is uh, showing a little something-something here. Well, uh, Teaching an old dog some new tricks. He's about to beat Grishik in game one. You think so? I mean, there's I some so. Rook H5 stuff. I mean, it's not like... Yeah, but come on, you're right. Solid. Hey, how many pawns do I got? How many pawns do you got? You got an extra one. I got an extra one. But you don't really have anything because you're not playing. Okay, hey, the we, the royal we. Okay. okay. We were inverted. Oh, look at that Queen C8 move, though. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's a square. It's Me a key. like... King G H one of those twos. King G two stops it. Yeah, the problem is you can't actually dislodge this queen from D four. I like that move though. There's gonna be some bishop G four action, bishop H three check first perhaps, and yeah, rook C one's nice though. I'm trying to kick that yeah. queen off the diagonal. In the tempo, have access to the square if the queen ventures too far. Okay, maybe queen F five hits F two. There's no. a bishop on B one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the second match of the day. <laughs> All right. You're not holding anything back. Not holding anything back now, Dan. Uh, E4 is possible if you want to simplify. Not because you're winning, right? You trade on D7, but getting the queens off the board, you're much better in endgame, game, right? But E4, there might be some queen G4 coming in there. With sacrifice on H4, uh -huh. there's a E4, pin on... E4, queen G4, you're actually pinning my pawn. Yeah. That's irritating, in yeah. fact. So I won't. It's probably good, so though. Maybe No, I don't think so. Because I think you were right. I mean, Rook, I'll show it. Rook H4 would, was a real threat because if you if you do some random move, Rook H4, you can't take it because right. it's made on G2. So I think I think that's a real issue, and so much so that Artemia plays F4. I just don't like look the look of this for White like, anymore. I don't know. I'm, I'm just I'm not really buying Grishik's position. It's all about a Rook sack, which just that's not a title of anyone's autobiography. All about the Rook sack. <laughs> But good thing you know. his position's not for sale. You didn't buy anything. I mean, just queen g4 is coming. Rook takes h4. Maybe I put the rook on g1 and say no to everything forevermore. Right? Okay. How's that for being a party pooper? I mean, kind of well, that's a party pooper. <laughs> You're so ridiculous. <laughs> the kindergarten cop reference. I no know what it was. I got it. Where's my bucket list? <laughs> Check it out. cop reference during chess show that nobody saw coming. Oh, f5. What? What do you take that pawn? Rook f1? Yeah, why did he sack it? He wants f6, clearly. But then rook h8 to h6. It protects everything. That was not good. Rook h6. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. Then then take on f5, queen g4 check. Ah, okay, yeah. I was going to say g4, but h4 falls with check. But yeah, if rook h6, you take, and then queen g4, game over. Yeah. So maybe it works out. And I should not be critical. Queen takes f6 comes now. Then you gobble back on okay, b1. King g8. Now rook h6. Yeah, he's still fighting here. He's fighting. He's but he's got 20 seconds to a minute. He's had way worse than classical chess before. Why are we arguing? Has it just been a long day or something? It Why just, can't we just get along? <laughs> we all agree. Grishik's worse. He's going to lose the game. I didn't say he's going to lose the game. You okay, said that. Well, that, that's why we're arguing, I guess, because I'm right and you're wrong. Um, what? Ooh. Look at that move. Queen takes f7. H5 falls with check. And you can resign. And I he don't, does. I don't want to say I told you so. So I'm not going to. You, you kinda, That's like what my wife says when she's like, I don't want to point out that I told you this. <laughs> what did you just do? Right? She does that all the time. I don't want to point out that I told you that a while ago. I'm not getting involved. In your marriage? Yeah. <laughs>
You're already there. <laughs> I'm already babysitting. Yeah, so Robert was in the house the other day when the new laundry machine was delivered, and they, they thought Robert was Shauna's husband. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty fun. The guy was, like, talking to Robert Shook about my issues, hand. issues yeah. at the house and, like, what do you want and stuff like that, and pretty fun. Um, I don't think Shauna minded. So. <laughs> um, anyway, but that's another story. Yeah, we'll talk about that one later, too. Don't share too much about your home life, Dan. <laughs> that's actually what my therapist's advice is. That's the, That wasn't my nickname in high school. Anyway. <laughs> All right, night coming around to G3. We have a French. This will be the first of many games where we criticize Black's position because the French is a bad structure. Yeah, but it's Caracan, so it's a glorified French. That's true. Bishop is outside the pawn chain. Word, homie. Knight G3, It, it broke H4, free H5. from the chain? What? You're saying it broke free from the chains? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm looking at Tommy. <laughs> Classic Tommy yeah. in the chat. One day I woke up and Tommy was one of my favorite people on Twitch. I don't know how it happened. Nobody does. It's just you're secretly a Peaky Blinders fan. I, I don't know. It just anyway. Knight G six. Here comes Knight H five. They've had G, a couple G7. moments where they've like moved a knight out and retreated this yeah. far. Accidental. And all right, right now, what is White going to do? H four, H five is one thing to consider, but this problem is the knight on G six covers it. Ooh, F six. Going for the break. <sighs> Actually, it's getting K better. And e6 is a problem. Yeah, but I've seen worse problems before. Bishop to g6 is also possible. And just take... Oh, but if I take back on e5 with the pawn, are you going to sack the exchange? I would love to. Oh, I think about it. it. Let's show it. Bishop d3 takes, takes, shake and bake on f3, and then you take with tempo. This is nuts. Yeah. I mean, the position is still crazy, right? Like, I, I don't even know if this is possible, but I'm, I'm just going to continue to... Calculate and yeah, look knight at the g6 retreat. I don't even know what's going right. on here. Nuts. I have queen d3. and Anyway, yeah, it looks like black is kind of holding. Um, Grishik taking his time decides to part ways with the e pawn instead. He got a lot closer to the camera. He did. Whoa. I, oh my god, I haven't looked in a while. I just looked over like huge Sasha. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know, and I've been given criticism, don't call the players by a nickname when Alexander's on screen. Sasha, very common nickname. Uh, in Russia for Alexander, and uh, I'm sorry if that confuses you. Wait, who told you not to say Sasha? Uh, somebody. I thought you were saying Sasha told you not to call him Sasha. No, no, he's fine with it. Okay, because I don't have to call you Danny. I can call you Daniel if you, you know. Call me whatever you want. <laughs> um, all right, but I actually do like the transition because the open E file keeps the E6 pawn weak, and positionally this is a common thing that you have to watch out for, right? Because whenever F6 is played in these French pawn structures, I know it was a Carol Khan, but whenever the French pawn structure changes, the e6 pawn will become the biggest weakness on the board. Yep. Um, and so that's basically what happened here. And uh, white is going to do everything he can to keep an eye on this e5 square so that the e6 pawn stays weak. And that's why the knight e4 is nice. It kind of uh, blockades the rook on e1 that just went back to f1. Yeah, to guard f2. Exactly. And this is what um, Grishuk is doing a great job of accomplishing. He's now saying, I'm going to get the e5 square. Not only do you have this weakness on e6... And we talked about with the isolated pawn, you want to blockade it. When there's a backward pawn, it's often nice to make sure it's stopping its tracks and yep. can't push forward so that eventually you can put pressure on it. Yeah. So a lot of the rest of the tension of this game is going to center around the e5 square. Um, and that knight's jumping right there. right? Like You can't stop me from... Well, that's actually a very good move, I think. Yeah, keep it. You want c5, right? You want c5, and you're saying, well, what's your bishop on e5 really doing? Mm -hmm. It's not really actually you want your knight there. Precisely. Right? But two pieces can't occupy the same square in chess. I've tried. Um, and you can now reroute that knight from f3 since you protected the pawn in f2. So you can move the knight away, play f3 or f4, get the bishop to g4 at some moment to attack that e6 pawn. Yeah, I like it. And he might even go g3 here to put the knight on h4. Not out of the question. I guess the bishop came to g6 to potentially go to h5. Yeah. So. But the thing is, if those light square bishops are traded, who does it really favor? I mean... It's it's still you're still dealing with the weak e6 pawn, still dealing with potentially weak light squares over here on the king side. So again, this is a positional grind here for Grishuk, right? Yeah, honestly, any trade will still favor white because this pawn e6 will kind of forever be there. Fun fact: as you look at these two guys, they're actually playing from two adjacent adjacent <laughs> rooms in a hostel. <laughs> it does kind of look like that. It looks pretty much like they're playing from the same place. Um, no, just kidding. They're actually just facing each other. And they're yeah, in the this is going to be room. funny. They're facing off and <laughs> twist ending. Well, at some point, the players should do that to us. Like, twist ending, they were in the same room. Surprise us. Um, all right. 
the tickle goes back and forth, meaning the knight goes back and forth from d2 to f3. Yep. I like your suggestion of g3. Yeah. I think g3, king g2, knight h4, push your f-pawn at some point. I think it's the way forward because I, what Artemi is doing is very smart with bishop c7. Yeah. As soon as the knight leaves, play bishop c7 to attack the e5 square. Mm -hmm. And that's why Grishuk went right back to f3. And he's trying to take a think of how to solve it. Q-Bird in the chess TV chat says, as compared to a normal French defense, Black has saved a bunch of tempi by not having to maneuver the bishop around here. It's kind of true, right? I think that the fact that Black has the fully developed situation is why White has no control over the nice. e file. Nice. Look at that. He finally traded on e He ended the stare down, traded on c7. He, he, he blinked, as they say. He blinked first. I think he just won the staring contest. Well, it's not over yet. Maybe I sack the exchange and play e5. Oh, it's just 95's coming. Here F3. Comes F3. F3, the knight will have to move, and finally E6 will be weak. Yep. Also, there might be a way to win a pawn right now. After F3, where's your knight going? Oh, he's, a, he's ignoring wow. everything. That's a positional move. <laughs> That's high class. That's high class. You know what he wanted to do, actually? He was guarding B6, so that when you take, there's no queen B6 targeting the pawn. Yep. That's interesting, actually. That's that's. I just learned something. That's high-level prophylaxis. Future defensive ideas. And the, actually, if you ever go a6 for black, I'll, uh, sorry, black. if black was a6, then I'll go f3 and then put my knight in c5 is white. Mm -hmm. and, and now you have a new outpost square, another reason why the pawn on a5 is strong. Yep. Yeah, high-quality chess right now. The old guard trying to teach the new guard new tricks, and I'm going to try not to make that same reference all day, but we do have one player from Russia who's been doing this thing of high-level chess for a very long time in Alexander Grishuk. And we have Vladislav Artemyev, one of the rising stars in uh, in the Russian chess game, so which is very close to the American rap game. Fun fact. Russian chess game. Hmm. Yep. Rising stars. F3, when the knight moves, we will see the E6 pawn under fire. Uh, Whoa. Because oh. rook F2 is made by queen C1 check. Oh, wow. Queen C1. Sack for mate. Shake and bake. Wow, that's actually... Oh, oh, he played it! Queen C1! But Queen E1. He is Queen E1. Oh, oh, he missed, he missed it, though. He missed it completely. <laughs> he missed it, oh. <laughs> Classic. No, no, what? Oh, wow. Rook F1 works. <laughs> oh, my. oh, my God. Queen E1. What? Yeah, but now he's in trouble. Just Rook... Because B2 just falls. Yeah, and then Rook C2 comes in. Wow. Oh, Timmy is a stone-cold killer. Look at him over but there. But why didn't he go Queen E1 instead of Rook back to yeah, F1? Yeah, Queen E1 was better. Oh, E6 so, is Because he missed it. You saw his reaction. He didn't see it coming. He's Yeah. Oh, wait. Is that knight trapped? Like, queen c3, rook f to c1? <laughs> this, this game is taking a ridiculous turn here. Yeah, but can't you take a... No, queen e6 check. Oh, duh. Oh, suddenly, suddenly Artemi blundered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're yeah. going to be laughing all day. He tricked him. He tricked him. Well, he, no, he blundered. Yeah, he blundered. Exactly. He blundered into success. Wow. If only that worked for me. <laughs> um, if you're just joining us, FYI, this is our second Speed Chess Championship match of the day. The double header action is real. We still have 13,000 of you. Levon Aronian barely got by Ali Reza Farusha in our first match of the day. But we're having a great time. We're a little tired, but we're doing it for you. And uh, we got a lot more chess ahead, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So thanks for being here. And Knight to e5. Yeah, Grishuk is going to have to even the score here. Now, we predicted Aronian would win the first match. We thought he was the favorite. Yep. It was a lot closer than we thought. I think we got the party started the right way. You and I have been really back and forth about who the favorite is here. I have no idea who's going to win this match. Well, so tell him who you said you, know, you thought would be the slight favorite. Alexander Grishuk. Yeah, and I said Vladislav Artemiev. Right, so we, that tells you how close we are here. I you feel said, why can't we get along? Sometimes we got to just agree to the experience factor, I look at Grishuk, not just World Blitz, not just being the older, the older, more experienced chess player, but also the SCC experience. Yep. Again, I think the increment always plays dividends in their first SCC match. Uh, Ali Reza just talked about that, right? Yep. Um, but as you said, you feel Artemiev is just, he's a rising rapid blitz star. This guy's a stud. And I just listen to what Grishuk says. Yeah. My opponent is a very good player. I am definitely not a favorite. Well, okay. There you go. See, well. listen to Sasha. There you go. I will. Um, and he, as I've said many times now, Sa uh, Sasha called uh, Artemy of the Russian Chuck Norris. Yeah. So how can I not approve? Which I don't understand <laughs> the reference. I mean. He's just saying that, you know. With Chuck, all things are possible. <laughs> Chuck giveth and taketh away. 
when Chuck does a push up, he doesn't go up. The world goes down. Yep. I mean, uh, we go on with Chuck yeah. Norris. Chuck. Yeah, keep going. This game is an extra piece for White, though. Yeah, the it's extra knight is strong. It's really strong. One of the best square. Okay, but the second rank makes it a little tricky. And as we look at time, combined with a weak king, right? Yeah, but rook f2 is a good way to help that king out. Yep. So it's a knight for just one pawn. You can take a5 in many of these variations, but it's just not going to be enough. The attack on the black king will, will happen in a few moves. So you can play queen c2. I was going to hit the rook on f5, throwing queen c8. But he's just going to rook g1, queen g3, yep. and going for g7. Straightforward. And without the second rank being an issue anymore, should be pretty, pretty smooth sailing here. Um, although again, he's just he's not playing fast enough for for the nerves to go away. Now that rook f4, what an irritating move! It's I'm actually sorry. a really good move. You're absolutely right, but I got to read this by Antoine B0. Wrong. Chuck Norris is the American Vlad Artemi. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Which is exactly the kind of joke Chuck Norris would be proud of. So, uh, very true. That's hilarious. Spidler on increments in the chess TV chat says we're the best two chess commentators, and chess has never been so entertaining. Who said that? I gotta say that because we know we have a lot more haters here than lovers, so I gotta give gotta give a shout out to some good comments there. Thank you, Svidler. Appreciate it. Not Peter Svidler. Yeah, that's why I got Spidler so confused. On increments. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what happens when Svidler's on increments. What's the difference between but... supplements and increments? <laughs> <laughs> right. Knight h6 check. As long check. as it's legal. Here comes knight h6 oh, check. Oh yeah, very nice. It's a fork of both f6 and the g pawn being pinned. All right, rookie six. Just knight back to e5. Somehow Sasha's F4 had some or five. Here he goes. Yeah, this is the right idea. They're living. Somehow this became quite the scramble, which is a recipe for disaster when you were up a piece for thirty moves here. Right, here comes Queen takes H six. There we go. Oh, or F6, F6 even better. Now Queen takes H six next. Should Always be enough. Artemiev lets the clock run out. Takes a deep breath, just so you know he is breathing. And uh, he sits almost as far back from his webcam as the someone else that is his avatar picture has him. Pretty far back. Go to Sib Elephant, and you'll see the someone else -y I'm talking about. <laughs> someone else -y. It's so funny. Hey, look, we have offbeat openings. Yeah, I love it. A little Verisov. You know what they say about the Verisov? I do not know what they say. What do they say? I was hoping you would have some. <laughs> 14,000 people are here. This is the second Speed Chess Championship match of the day. Oh, God, that you, hurt. You getting that stretch? And I heard that. Back crack. I heard that. It didn't sound good. Yeah. Keeping these old hips loose. Um, but we're pretty excited to be here. Let's remind you who's playing today. Let's bring up our player profile cards. They are both from Russia. Who will you meet first? It's Vladislav Artemyev. He is the number three player in Russia, actually. A rising star, as we've said. And uh, a lot of people's dark horse pick to maybe be the young Christoph Duda of this year's SCC, right? Kind of the young player to join the fold and get a lot farther than we thought. But then there's Alexander Grishuk. The guy, he was uh, sitting across from him, and there's a whole bunch of gifted subs on behalf of our stream to yours. Those are from our chess channel here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. The hype is real, and uh, we're pretty pumped about the day. Alexander Grishuk has played in many SCCs. He's a former World Blitz champion, and he just won to level the match. So thank you for being here. The Speed Chess Championship, the most elite event in online chess esports, and uh, hit the follow button before you go anywhere else. Night H2. Possible? Probable. Hmm. Such a weird move to play. But it is a pawn that's hanging. It's a chess 960 move, right? It's, it's, it's super greedy. Well, what's my middle name? Guillermo? <laughs> Close. Gary? No. Greedy George? <laughs> Getting closer. I, I actually have no idea what your middle name is. Well, that hurts a lot. Well, how am I supposed to know your middle name? Your middle name's Lee. <laughs> Grisha. <laughs> <laughs> You're really good. All right. Knight d7 plays the safe move to try to make sure that uh, he has opportunities to castle before getting too greedy on this. Pawn on h2. Still under under uh, be being spied there. I kind of like capturing that pawn h2. It would have been interesting, right? Let's analyze it. Back this thing up. And uh, why didn't he take it is the question. I wish I had an easy answer. The bishop on f5 does seem a bit trapped, but thing is, you're, the queen and the bishop on f1 are under attack. So but if, if I take it, let's say, and I go for it. And now queen takes g1. Right, you're getting a ton of pieces here. 
I'm um, up in exchange. And I'm going to get some pawns. Something like this. It's queen h2. And I'm not going to trap your queen, am I? No. Hmm. Hmm. I, I literally have no idea. Um, it would have been an interesting pawn to grab. It's just not a very orthodox position. And Robert mentioned earlier the Verisop opening. Jokes aside, we'll show you it right here, which is defined as this move knight to c3 on move 2 and then developing the bishop. This is not the traditional game you have. Whenever you have a queen pawn game, meaning the queen's pawns are leading the way in the center, very often you have the pieces going behind the pawns. So this is kind of a really aggressive offbeat approach and leads to positions. Look at this. Pieces moving twice before your castle. That's also breaking an opening principle. And uh, we get a weird position where maybe, maybe indeed there was a chance. I don't know, right? Why not take it? It's a great question. Yeah, would have been interesting. Okay. Well, um, if we get a repeat of this, the match is young. It's only 1-1. One, one. You can see the scoreboard. So if the Verisov becomes a weapon that Artemia plays, will that be something he prepared? We ask the players all these types of questions in the post-match interviews. Who knows? Um and the big problem with the Verisov, in addition to what you were saying with moving a uh, piece twice, and just you highlight this often, is this pawn on c2 behind the knight. Yeah. Right. You don't really like having your pawn behind the knight because you're not actually attacking the center. This pawn on d5 is very well defended. But if you can imagine that pawn as you're putting on c4, you're actually p putting pressure on the center. So right. uh, g takes f5 here. Black is happy to take it. Look at the e4 square. Black's going to pop a pony right yep. in there. It's a nice square. That's a nice square. And then another pony can go to b6 and c4. Yeah, this is uh, how you handle the Verisov as far as Black's approach. I mean, legit, you can look at this game if you're wondering about a system against it. Just very straightforward. This line with, with g6 on move 3, very common. So uh, nothing fancy in this game. I, I wonder if this will be an opening Artemiev goes back to. We'll see. Um, yes. The knight comes to b6, as you said. Knight c4 followed by queen b4. Could be a real b2 problem. And the only way to really prevent the knight from getting into c4 is like b3, but then Which, the dark squares. Yeah, and you got a lot of them. Dark squares, something like b3, queen a3 check, and we rush the a pawn for the attack against the king. That looks good. There are potential knight sacrifices Ooh, anyway. He, he goes does for it. it. We're going to see. We're going to see if that's a thing. So he might save the check. He might say that your king's not really going to go to b2 because then there will be some knight c4 sacrifices in the air or queen b4 followed by knight c4. So he plays knight e4. Wow. Yeah. He may have to go for something like this now, because you don't really want to take here. Whoa, King B1, he's just, he doesn't care about the pressure. We're getting scared. What about Queen B4 here? Queen B4, followed by Knight C4, or Knight A4. Hmm. He's going to take with the, oh, he's going to take with the D yeah. pawn because of the D5 square opening up. Yep. The natural thing to do, everyone, I was, I was about to suggest the F pawn to undouble the F pawns, and usually you want to take toward the center, not away from it. But in this case, you're freeing a very vital square for the knight, and that may lead to more attacking chances. So do you play for a cheapo here with queen b5? Queen b5, and you're threatening queen takes e2, <laughs> followed by knight c3, fork yeah. down. I'll show the cheapo, because people love tactics, as much as they say, like, we don't want to watch bad things on TV, yet you keep watching the Kardashians. So there <laughs> you go, there's a train wreck for you. That's how you win a queen. <laughs> what? Is that, ins uh, that, that was good. That was oh, I thought that was... No, that was hilarious. Okay, I thought that was appropriate. So. <laughs> it was appropriate. It was so funny. All right, the queen establishes herself on c3. The fact that white can't play rook d3, yep. that's huge, because here comes a5, a4, a3. I'll go full Hikaru Nakamura. a5, a4, a3. Get castle. Uh, queen b2 made it. Rook d5. H5. <laughs> Why go. h5? Um, no idea. He's trying to stop g4, I guess, and so he can castle kingside, but mm -hmm. now he can't castle kingside. And we're in a situation where queen b5 check is now on the docket. Although yep. you do have to watch out for the c2 square. Yeah, the queen runs too far, c2 falls. Oh, king d7. d6, look king, at oh, dirty Daryl. King d7. Put the king on d7, there's queen b5 check, yeah. and then queen c6. No, 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 king d6, and then run to f6. Oh my gosh, you've <laughs> got to be kidding me. Let's look at it. Hey, we saw Mama oh, Jarv do more okay, he, interesting things. He didn't yesterday. do it, but if Queen B5, King E6, Queen D5, King F6, the king just runs to safety. Yep, and the C2 C2's pawn. falling. Yeah, that would have been nuts. Rook D5 instead maybe threatens things like Queen B5, so Grishik says it will no longer be check. I block that diagonal, sir. And now Rook H6 is just going for the D pawn. Is that a pawn that's wandered too far? Right. 
Is the stray calf scenario? Charlie, you can never come back. <laughs> you can never come back. But it's on the D file, so he's got to give it a new name. I know that was in All Dogs Go to Heaven. D for dog. Because sometimes you got to read between the lines of my pop culture references. Okay. Sometimes there just aren't really lines there. Right. Well, they're just circles. <laughs> 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 More like scribbles. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Rook H6. Hey, that D6 pawn yeah, is... Yeah, no, it really has gone too far. The one thing is, if it's all traded and H falls, whenever we get into queen and pawn endings, there's always chances for draws, even if you're down a pawn, because this king will be open. Maybe white has some perpetual checks coming. Right? Yep. But if the problem is if your queen goes away from the E2 square, the F2 pawn is going to be vulnerable. So... Mm. That's why when H4, so when he takes H5, the H pawn is closer to promoting square. But this very forced uh, calculation here, the rook takes D6. Oh, you know what he might do after it takes on D6? Uh, he'll go queen takes H5 first, perhaps? Mm, then if you trade, it's check. Yeah, and that way the F2 pawn isn't going to be lost in any of these lines. Okay, we're going to find out. I think he's going to go for what you said, yep. And he's also threatening F7 and F5. So. He missed it. Look at Vukashuk's face. He totally like, missed Queen H5 doing? first. Ah, time to wake up, Sasha. Play, can you play Queen D4? Or that actually might end in a losing pawn in the game because the H pawn. Yeah, this is one of those really dangerous transitions where that protected passer gives White a lot of power. Although uh, if you push it to H5, that's when tree, Queen trades become good for Black yeah, because the pawns, now the pawns want to be picked off. Yeah. But Grishuk is missing things so far. You know, he, he's making it very clear by his uh, his reactions, but he's just like... <laughs> that was like a Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> 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 Never go full Jar Jar reference. The one character we all wish we could have back. <laughs> um, okay, but let's remind everybody of uh, what a pass pawn is, since we got about 14,000 people here. The basic definition of one of the most common endgame advantages in chess is that when you have a pawn and there's nobody in front of it, that is called a pass pawn because you have the potential to become a queen or something else when you reach the edge of the board. So big difference in the position is White's advantage of this protected passer that is always starting to run. Okay, but Black wants to take and get a passer of his own. Unfortunately, that probably allows a perpetual, and I think as fun as this game has been, we're about to see our first draw of the match right here. Can the king run away somehow? Ooh, king of seven. So if he goes to F7, I don't see a... Oh, it's no queen E7 check, queen E8 check. Okay, I'll get the perpetual. And right on cue, we've got our perpetual check image to remind you of this word we've been saying a few times, called a perp, the appropriate kind. The appropriate type of perp in a chess game that you've been losing is to go for a draw. <laughs> Danny. Oh, back on camera. <laughs> Take a breath. You need it. And you know who doesn't like perps? The chess police. The chess police. Oh, dude, that was sick. That's my producer, Arn. Let's get a Studio C shout out for those of you that are just tuning in to the chess world for the first time. You didn't know the studio is real. Lots of chess. Robert, say hi. I'm saying hi. No, wave hi to the camera. Thank you. What's up, Jaren? We got Jaren is carrying over there. Arn Hawaii pulling the strings. And uh, we got a lot of uh, action here today. We're already about five plus hours in of chess coverage, and we got a lot more to come. Thanks for being here. Yeah, and you just went full dad mode on me. I did. You're like Robert, say hi. What do you say to guests? Kiss your mother. <laughs> Whatever. What, is the, what does the dad say? Like, I don't think you better hug your mother when she comes over for Thanksgiving. Your You'll kids always be her little boy, Robert. <laughs> your kids aren't old enough for you to say that because <laughs> they live at home. Okay. Um. What do we got here? A Sicilian, uh, a con. Some sharp play coming. Yeah. Hopefully. Let's back this thing up. Take a look at how we got here. The analysis tells us that we have a Sicilian con defense with a6 played early. e6 transposes. The con Sicilian is defined by these e and a6 pawns developing early, keeping the dark square bishop open, as well as sometimes some really aggressive uh, queen side developments like queen c7 and b5. So that's what black is trying to do, and that's pretty much what black does in this game. He eventually plays b5, and uh, we have an all out Sicilian kind of attack, right? Black's got queen side space. White is preparing for a mating attack on the king side. Rook h3. Look at that. Rook lift. Look at that rook lift. Guarding the third rank. 
Never ask Krishuk if he even lifts, bro. Because yeah. that rook is up there. You even rook lift, bro? Um, <coughs> the uh, the rook here actually has multi purposes. That's highlighted: guarding the bishop on d3, also preparing just to be off of the diagonal for yep. coming tactics. Right, that bishop is spying it, um, and that allows you to be a little more flexible with f5, with e5, all those sort of things, where the rook can eventually come to the center. So there you go. H uh, TFP zero says rook h3 is such a Grishuk move. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. But <laughs> Sounds like a compliment, though, so let's, yeah. let's just take it. But yeah. it is a very interesting idea because you said it gets off the diagonal, and you never know where that rook might want to go, or if once you castle queenside, the a1 rook might end up on the h file if you need to double up there. So it could be uh, interesting to see how Grishuk, you know, Charge yep. forward here. H5, G6 is an obvious idea that just says, look at that pawn F7. You really wanted to stay there to protect E6. But if I can, there it is, mm -hmm. the start of that plan. Uh, you can also play H6 and say, look at your bishop on F8. I'm going to take over the dark squares, and your bishop's going to have to sit and not be so pretty. One of the things that Black has sort of in his back pocket in these positions is that if he hasn't done too much damage on the queen side, he can always castle long and sort of get out of dodge, uh, run away from White's coming pawn storm. E5 is a nice move, uh, a common move in these knight orbs because you sort of stick it to the pawn on E4 so that it's forever forever there, which blocks the bishop, and maybe gives you a long-term uh, target. The problem is exactly what we're seeing, right? Opens up the F5 square and even the D5 square. And another issue is usually when you play uh, E5, you want a knight to replace the pawn on E5, mm -hmm. right? You want that uh, knight D7 to E5 and that you just clog the square. But your knight's on B6, which means there might be some tactics around the move white move e5 you ever take on f4. So that's why he just castle queenside. And you don't really see players castle queenside too often in Sicilians. No, but I, I, again, I like what he did. I was foreshadowing that that might happen. Yeah. And, and I like the transition with e5 and castles because as a knight or player myself who's lost many of the, I mean, won many of these <laughs> positions as black, um, I can say that, no, jokes aside, this is, this isn't bad because if, I, if I'm thinking about this, how would I take advantage of the rook? Look at white's king. White's still in the center here. Yeah. Right? I mean... Well, B4 might be an option for white, right? You always have to consider that. Yeah, especially no, seriously, that's a danger. Danger, Will Robinson, or in this case, knight on C5. But the thing is, the white king on E1, if you play B4, you're not going to the queen side. So he goes to castle, queen side makes sense. He doesn't commit to any kind of unnecessary pawn moves yeah. too early. And, yeah. So Interesting. That. Both sides have castled long. A lot of people still talking about the thriller that you may have just missed. If you happen to just be tuning in to our chess channel for the first time, hit the follow button, and you would have been here for Levon Aronian, number one in Armenia, versus Ali Reza Farouja, number one in Iran. Aronian barely escaped by the youngster to move on to the quarterfinals. So it was it was quite the match. Yeah, that was as thrilling as they come. You know, we've had Jan Christoph Duda. We've mentioned his name many times. He'll mm -hmm. be playing a car knock The comeback kid is the nickname he's earning, at least in the SEC. I thought it was uh, Rick Astley. But that's because... <laughs> <laughs> the Rick roll. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, anyway, in this particular position, look at this. It's almost like black castle king side on the queen side. Mm -hmm. Because when you castle king side, your king goes uh, one square from the flank file. And here, that's happened for black. And yep. look at the rook on c8. It's, it's aiming down the c file, but the bishop on d3, knight on c3 combination do well to prevent any sort of huge attack. At but least for now. But I, I don't know. I mean, I, one thing I like about Sasha's game here as compared to the first three, he's up on the clock. Yeah. He normally gets himself under time pressure, as we know. But uh, So he clearly feels like he has a sense of what to do here. But but I, I, I kind of like the way our team has played this one, to be what honest. About I, Bishop takes B5 ideas at the right moment. Right? Yeah, you I think always for sure that's keep something to look out. out for. Thank you for the bits there. Super appreciate that. Glad you like the dance moves. If it'll bring more bits, I'll dance moves all night long, baby. I'll throw you uh I'll throw you some floss if you're into it. I got the sprinkler. Oh, you have never seen my Carlton. <laughs> you ain't never seen nothing until you see my Carlton. Um, all right. Rook G eight threatens G six. Yeah. Also overprotects the G pawn in case this bishop needs to do something. But you just asked a question. Is there a sack on B five at some point? I think so. F four? What? Yeah, he, I mean he gave up the pawn for the moment to win it back opening up many files in the process. Uh, you can't protect that four. That's over that bishop trying to come to g7, make yeah. use that long diagonal. I think h6 will be played because of that, but then g5 is a permanent weakness along with the pawn on h6. Again, this just, I don't know. 
and I'm normally biased to white in these positions. You know that. We've yeah. done a lot of things together. Some of it chess. And uh, <laughs> and I like black here. Because you want to. What are you gonna do with your pieces, though? How are you gonna continue this game? I didn't know you'd ask me that. I'm asking you the tough chess questions. Mm -hmm. Because you want this knight to jump immediately from c5 to e5. Okay, he nice. plays bishop e7. I, I was going to say put a rook on e8 first, but I like f6. You're, you're, you're getting rid of the g-pawn as a target, but you're getting your bishop to the diagonal, but what about which like you, rookie you three denied three when yeah. you played this. But rookie That's three. why I wanted rook e8 first. Um, Overprotect. Now, so you, you, now you, I guess, where, where are you settling? Are you settling on d8? Yeah, yeah that doesn't look good. There are also bishop takes b5 ideas. Yeah, now, now b5 is, is on the agenda for sure. Oh, uh -huh. that's not a fun move to play. Look at that move. The battery is real. Back up the knight. Maybe even play b4 to really take away every square of that pony. Just, I, like be, I like b4. Rookie right. 6, maybe take on rookie, f6 rookie first. Rookie 6 also looks good. Threatening to take. Yeah, just seeing that black is moving backwards and white is clearly gaining initiative here. Pawn d6 a permanent weakness. The knight on b7 stuck there. Not easy to protect the pawn d6 because your bishop's on d8 where a rook would be better placed there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is no fun. Look at that patient move. Threatening rook takes d6, everyone, because when the knight takes, bishop takes will win the queen. That's a pin to the king. So you're saying... No, never mind. No. You know where I was going to go with that? Yeah, we know, Tommy. I'm looking for that mate for you. Not everyone has the chemistry that a bishop does with a queen in creating an absolute pin. If you didn't know what that was, read that informational card above you there. Hope you appreciate our chess tips we're bringing you. Um, all right, g4 played. Just trying to get a, a diagonal for the bishop. Yeah. And what would you just take on d6? With the rook or the bishop? With the bishop. Take, take, take with the rook. You're threatening rook takes a6. Yeah, it just feels like this seems very vulnerable for black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I might start with a4, though. In, like in the, in the initial position. a4. Something like that, just a break open. Yeah, I like that. Also, you can do it because the queen guards c2. That's full board awareness. He's going okay, for he's this. He's going for the line you talked about. He might take with the queen on d6, too. It's also an option, but... Yeah, rook takes is definitely okay, better. Rook takes king b7 was my question, because then you have a pinned rook to your queen on h2. That was the worry. Hmm. So maybe queen e5 there. The thing is, I always have this rook f7 idea if you ever go bishop e7. So you're not going to be able to just pin and win my rook. Yep. Because I'll pin and win right back. Hey, you've been pinning and winning. Uh, he's going for the rook f7. I so like bishop it. Bishop e7, rook f7, and that's... Uh... Bishop e7, rook f7, just to show it. Because if you take, I get your queen with check. So you don't get my lady. Yep, here it is. h7 is also hanging. Which, you know, may not seem relevant at first, but that's an h-pawn that's... What if we play... Oh, he goes for the queen sack. Wow. Takes with check. I don't think he's going to like that. Queen g1. Queen g1, such a key move. Hitting g4 and a7. Look at you calling the shots. Put the queen on her favorite spot. You love it. Here comes queen a7. And the g4 pawn can also just be captured, but queen a7 I takes think, a6. I think you can take here first, right? What is black going to do? Take yeah. here? Uh -huh. That's dynamite. Should I call you Napoleon? You call me explosive when I hit that square. It's now queen d4 hitting g7 and a7. Hey, Grishuk yeah. and I are on the same page. You're getting page. better with the, with the day as it goes on here. This Qu match gets longer. Queen g7 check. Oh. He's trying to go queen c6 check. He'll just keep moving his queen back and forth. Queen d4 back is possible. Queen c4 check is possible. Hmm. I, I like it. I thought the king should stay on b7. I don't know why I went to b8. It's intuitive as a human. You want your king on the opposite color square as the bishop, right? Right. I mean, I, I agree with you, but it's just funny, right? Because we asked that question, and that's definitely why I just psychologically didn't want the queen there. How much... Uh, I mean, black does not have much time left either. But give him credit for the blockade, right? The bishop holding both rooks. This is this is actually not an easy position. If this was over the board with lots of time on the clock, black would black would have some chances here. Yeah, queen three is good. You, you yeah, can go I, c4, I c5. Play c3 at some first. Yeah, play c3. I like that move by Grishuk. Bring the queen in. Just be patient because look at the clock. Bishop c4 here. Just work it. Here goes work bishop it. a6 next. Oh, the rook's running out of squares. Yeah. Very nice. King a2. Here comes queen e6 now. 
or king a2 or king c2. I like a2 because I just don't want to give the black rook any checks in the f file. Yeah, okay, good point. And that means when your queen comes back to d4. Oh, I thought that was even better, hitting both these squares again. Looked pretty good. Okay, queen d4 now. Second time around, and, and there you're you go. you're still covering the f2 square, Learning. very importantly. Now just take on a4, yeah. Winning pawns, winning games. If these game. guys keep at it, they'll almost be as good as us. <laughs> they keep at it. We're going to get we like guessing these moves six moves in this time control. Check and make. Six moves, six games, I mean. Oh, I thought he would check rook, queen, a6, but bishop, b8 was the thing. So, Okay, but plenty of time. Grishuk about to take his first lead of the match. If you're just joining us, the younger Russian won the first game. Grishuk leveled the score, and after a draw, we have our second victory for Grishuk in the match. Our uh, first shout-out to Grandmaster to be playing Guess the Move over there. Let's try to get the Guess the Move uh, scoreboard going at some point here. We've got a lot of people playing it. Diamond members, title players, lots of fun. Go to chess.com directly so you can play Guess the Move. I'll share a link to the game in chess.com TV chat if one of our mods can uh, help us out, maybe share a link. <sighs> and I ruined everything. You ruined everything. Hold on. Everything's going to be okay. Watch this, Aaron. Nothing happened. Crisis averted. Must be proud of you. You ruined it in the first place. Well, it just shows you we're real human beings over here. That you make mistakes. I'm and a real person. You. But you didn't apologize. Fifteen thousand people now know. I am sorry. I'm sorry. About that. <laughs> a little bit of a, that gave Arn like a little bit of ah uh, panic attack. Everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. And there's the link. And uh, you see the link as well in the uh, Twitch chat. You can go there, play Guess the Move, which is actually a really fun game. You try to make the move before the players do. And uh, a lot more prizes, a lot more stuff coming with Guess the Move. We've got big plans. So enjoy it. Have some fun while you can. Danny is a real boy, says Pulberta. <laughs> <laughs> He's a real boy, <sighs> right? Not a made-up not a made up character. What do you think uh, about that, these uh, dark squares, though? I'm a little worried about that. We've got them. the real Peter Sviddler, by the way, in Twitch chat. And we have the fake and one. And we've got the fake Peter Sviddler in Chess TV. Sviddler on increments is saying, Danny, would you agree with me that Sviddler is the most polite chess player in the world, even more polite than Robert? <laughs> <laughs> Referring to himself in the third person because he already claimed to be. Anyway, back to the chess. It's but, just uh, also funny because my brother's name is Peter, so this sounds like an argument we would have mm -hmm. with my parents when we were younger. Who's more polite? Is it me or Robert? <sighs> Shout out to Sviddler. We'll see him tomorrow for the Fisher Random World Chess Championship quarterfinals. And uh, shout out to everybody that's with us. Thanks for being here. These seven positions worry me because of the f4 square. Yeah. Right? It just it's blocks for the taking. You can plant that bishop on f4. If white goes g g5, I mean it's not that threatening. You know it's going knight h5. Plant the pony on f4 instead. Mm -hmm. And look at Grishuk just trying to go a5 a4 and open up the queen side. Knight I f6. Like look at that. Just avoiding g5 so it doesn't open up the king side at all. Yeah, this is not looking too pleasant. You can go h5 here. That would be how you shut it down. Shut down the studio, Dylon. Um, I agree with Mario Bros. Uh, David Navarro is the most polite. I would have to agree. Wesley So gave him a run for his money in that interview yesterday. Yeah, but Navarro is like the nicest. And yeah. it's not, you know, obviously Wesley So is extremely nice as well. Bishop H3 is a super tricky move. Threatening G6 here, everyone. Uh, if something like A4 occurs, G6, and even if you take with the bishop, bishop takes E6 undermines the f-pawn and uh, keeps white's attack alive. So he took on g5 for that reason. But but that invites the knight. And and now I want to take with the bishop on e6 and, and fork. So does black on play g6 here? I don't really want to play king f8, right? That just invites rook d to g1. And, um, and g6 looks hideous as an option. I'm so surprised still that he didn't take with the knight, though. That, that Hitting the bishop and the threats there, okay. He might give up this g7 pawn, actually. Yeah. From a practical perspective, makes sense. A4, mm -hmm. let's look at it. A4, rook takes g7. Do you just slide the queen right away and just ignore everything over here on the king side? Yeah, you're going for a huge right. attack. A takes b3, queen a2 queen check. Queen a2 check, c4, c4. Yeah. bishop a3. Look at us completing each other's. I wish we had sandwiches <clears> right <throat> now. We'll get some sandwiches later. Oh, man. <clears throat> hey, look at that. I got much love from Pulberta there. See that? You're reading it now? Grishuk. But you're, now you're trying to say it right. But I'm just, I just wanted you to acknowledge that Sviddler, I've said Grishuk many no, times. I'm not saying you said it wrong, but Sviddler, just, just let me have my moment. Yeah. A great moment. <laughs> See? And David has no rivals and never will. Navarra. Nicest yeah. guy. Yeah. But look at that bishop on f8. 
I think that's a good move, actually. Guarding g7 so that you can focus your efforts again over here on the queen side. And just goes to show that how is white going to continue the effort? We can sack and exchange on g7. Go for it. That doesn't. Yeah, I mean, he he's he's going to do it. He's going to call your bluff, right? Here he goes. Well, I don't think it's my bluff. I think his position is just bad. And this is coming from someone who's had the white side of positions like this right. many times. Right. He started with b3, the Nakamura. And what happened was he got his bishop on b2, but look how bad that bishop is in the game composition on that diagonal. Yeah. No, it was uh, it was the b3 kind of hippo Nakamura, but a weird decision for the old lady to swallow the fly and block everybody. Uh, this whole this whole opening is just one of those things that you play in bullet and blitz when you're playing online chess. And this is why I favored Grishik in this matchup because this is really serious chess. This is like. This is like to win an SEC match, you bring your opening preparation. Yeah. You bring your repertoire. And, and and that's just the truth. We've seen it, right? This is like not even Hikaru, you know, plays real openings in these in these events, yep. right? I just don't think that this is the kind of opening White is gonna feature and do well consistently. Yeah, so. interesting decision by Artemiev because it didn't feel like you know, in the prior games that he you know, needed to venture out into B three in these offbeat openings and right now he is in a situation where he has a pawn and a dark square bishop for a rook and if somehow you can open up the dark squares then white will be happy but but how yeah there's a pawn right. on d4 that's this guy's strong protected by another pawn and bishop to c1 that diagonal is not that useful right queen of four i wonder if what he's recognized is now that he's up the exchange robert he forgets the queen side attack is he going to castle long and then trade on the g file he... Right, an idea. I mean, the thing is, the queen on f4 guards f7, so I started thinking that might be a sneaky uh, intent. Castle long, put the other rook on g8, and uh, get the get more pieces off the board. The problem is knight g5 hops in there at some point, and f7's under attack. Okay, maybe not. Okay, he goes for it right away. But bishop g6, I think, is the... Then just take on g6 Ooh, or I, Actually, six. what do you do with this? You bishop g8? The, that's just seems less than ideal, but okay, yeah, put the bishop on g8. So queen takes h4 is meant by knight d2 to f3, and that's real compensation. Look, look, look at us. Bishop g8 makes sense. I think. Not look at me. Look at you. You're the you're the genius no, today. No, the us was I'm Sasha. Was uh, Sasha and. Oh, myself. you yeah okay. I was gonna say, <laughs> I'm I'm your Robin today. You're you're the you're the Batman. Well, um, you're the one in the Batcave, so you kind of have to be Batman. Well, as Robin gets the keys to the Batcave eventually. Well, then the he takes series. the motorbike and then uh, yeah, yeah yeah he gets almost off the ledge. Okay, bishop g8 played. I do believe that this idea of castling long is, is a secret intent, potentially. That makes sense. It's, it's funny because we've talked about how the rook on a8 hits the a2 pawn, and there's a lot of pressure there. Yep. But you're right. If you need to shore up your king side and castle queen side to make sure that everything is uh, safe, then, yeah, at some point it can happen. I really like putting a piece on e5 soon. Yep. Right? Especially if the knight is traded, h4 becomes weak again. Maybe not with the rook because of g8, but right, the tactics here get harder for white as the pieces are traded because you're down the exchange and uh okay he goes for 95 we like it as as the position simplifies black should be just up material bishop c1 i like this just queen f6 tempo but now you can cast along if you want he's unwinding <laughs> he's getting that bishop out yeah there's also knight g6 ideas so open oh, the c5 pawn's hanging that's the problem you don't want to lose that pawn What's funny is white is kind of like one coordination away from being okay. Like if you could put the queen on g3 or something. And what about knight takes e5 and f4? And then if queen takes, ooh, discoveries. Yeah. Oh, let's look at that. Knight takes, knight takes, f4, queen takes, discovery town, population, queen on f4. But there's maybe queen f3? You can tell a certain yeah. item of that move, but yeah. offering the queen trade. I think he's calculating it. He's got extra time. So Artemiev up on the clock, unlike he was in the previous game. Wanting to win to level the score here. Obviously, if you're just joining us, we have a one-point lead for Alexander Gershik. And uh, let's talk about the discovered attack, a tactic that occurs often in chess, where one piece moves and reveals the attack behind it, which is what we were just talking about. You can see a pretty good example of that, knight moving to re reveal an attack on the queen. So basic tactics for those tuning in. We appreciate you being here if it happens to be your first chess show. Or if you happens to be like your 100th chess show and like me, it just took you a long time to learn Discovered Attacks. That's okay, too. No judgments. Judgment-free zone. Completely agreed. Um, what's he thinking about now? Now the time has gone far enough that you're wondering. Well, you just put a calm move. Maybe he's just suggesting that his position is not so terrible and black doesn't have a clear way out. Now knight e 5 is a big threat because then you follow up with f4 and look at the bishop on g2 and rook on a8. 
staring oh, each other down the diagonal. Nice. And by each other, I mean the bishop stares on the rook because the yep. rook can't stare back. Yeah. It's like when someone's looking at you from across the room and you're like feeling <laughs> self-conscious because they know you and you don't know them. Exactly. That happens to you often. It, it, it's, it's awkward. It feels it feels weird sometimes. <coughs> um, we've got knight takes e5 and f4 coming. Actually, it's hard to stop because if you move the knight, if you move the knight from e5, e5 comes anyway. Yeah. And we've got the same stare down. Hmm. Well, look at the time surgery. 17 seconds, 16 seconds, counting down for Grishuk. I and mean, what's going on? Yeah. No time on the clock. We might have a scramble to bring this one to a close. Buckle up, kids. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Oh, he plays e5 to shut down the bishop. I love it. No more tactics. But okay, that... it's a commitment, right? Because yep. you also sacrificed... And and the fact that our team has kept the pressure that he has, and Black has struggled so much with coordination, you got to give him credit, right? If you could just put a bishop on g5, he's trying to go h5. He's using that extra pawn. Yeah, and the time favors our h5. Yeah, I Let's like h5. It. h5 and then bishop f5. He might start with bishop f5. Bishop f5 also good right away. Agree, but this move order I think a little h6 more accurate. h6 even. You can you can consider pushing. Oh, that. h6 and rook g7. Put uh, the bit. Oh, yeah. What a game right now. I mean, this is the compensation h6. here is real. Uh oh. Bishop g5. Bishop g5. Bishop g5. Queen d6 only move. Knight h4. Wow. What a tough position to play black with only three seconds on oh, the clock. Oh, knight takes g6. Bishop d7 check. Looks mm -hmm. like a pretty good option. Even rook d7 is like weird. Yeah, but I think but you win the black queen right now. Knight g6, fg6, bishop d7 check. Yeah. Takes Whoa, a d3. Uh, I didn't like taking that pawn. That seemed unnecessarily... Yeah, and now he's getting down on time. Yeah, that did not seem like a good decision. Early moment in the match, but could be a game we're talking about uh, later on, depending on the result here. So, D he's trying to trade... Oh, e4 is hanging. Take it out with check. Whoa. That's not good. Blundering away the game here. Night before. Night before. Queen G2, night before was mate. Oh my god, you he missed night before. it. That would have been sick. We're gonna back up and show you. Night before was a queen sacrifice for mate. Let the game finish, but we're uh we're gonna show you what just happened there. That was nuts. We're uh we're we're gonna wait here for the game to finish and then we'll we'll show you what happened in that one. Wow. What a crazy tactic he made. And now I mean the black king's in big danger here. Bishop E seven. Whoa, and he wins. On time. Wow. Did Grishik miss a chance to win that game? Now we'll bring it up and show you as soon as this next one gets underway. What we've got here was a weird tactic where instead of playing queen takes d2, trading queens, black had knight to b4. Yep. Sacrificing the queen because of rook takes a2 with mate. Yep. I'll show you again. Knight to b4, and rook takes a2 mate. I think Sasha missed it and may have just cost himself the chance at a two-game lead in the match. <sighs> Dang. Dang. Maybe he should do more puzzle battles. Maybe he should do more puzzle battles. You're just going to copy what I'm saying? Are you just going to copy what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> you just turned the tables I on me. The tables on me. <laughs> that was so good. Oh. All right, queen d3. Queen d3. <laughs> All right, let's talk about chess now. I love so dark. Show it one more time. It was good. It was. It was. Uh, it was craygasm worthy. Or use hesgasm if you're a subscriber. That's the real emote for big chess moments. Let me show you. What do you think about these lines with this queen on d3? I always feel uncomfortable um, as white. I don't. I just don't like the square d3 for my queen. The e4 pawn feels vulnerable, but you know maybe Sasha feels better about it. Um, what do I feel like? I played a lot of these as white. You asked me a real question. I mean, I think the problem I have with this is you always end up wanting to undo it. Right. It's not a maneuver that you you continue to to build on. But okay, if you can, if you can get castled, b4, get a rook to the d file, Ooh, and this this actually might be another way to do it as well. Okay, giving up um, g7 because g2 will be a goner at the end of that. You take on g7, I go rook g8 and take. Mm -hmm. So, Sasha thinking here, and you got this, this hedgehog structure, right? But the bishop can come to b7, the knight can come to d7. You put a rook on c8, you castle kingside. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Super solid, but ooh, he goes for it on that note. One of the risks of taking the G2 pawn is maybe the rook never finds its way back home. Yeah. There's always weird ideas here like bishop. No, because of knight g8. Knight g8 is such a nasty move. Yeah. So but queen h3 does the job. So I guess white's castling queens out. White is well ahead in development. But way down on the clock. Grishik doing kind of his old old tricks here where he gets gets behind on time. And again, as much as he's known as a great Blitz player, a World Blitz champion, uh, former, but Grishek is somebody who consistently gets himself under time pressure, right? He does. Ooh, is there some kind of sack on E6? Not yet. Not yet. But you know I'm tempted. You know what I do with other people's pieces. <sighs> I've been talking to you about it for years. I'm sorry. I don't listen. You know? Forgive me. Speaking of sacks, though, one of the other ideas is to keep the king in the center, put a rook on C1, and I don't know. This line probably not as good, but you always got to keep an eye on that d5 square. Right. Something went wrong here for for Grishuk. Yeah, and you can't go bishop f3 either because c4 hangs. Yeah, bishop f3 runs into queen takes c4. Although there might be e5 there. It's one of those things you really have to calculate. Yeah, he, Whoa. Castle's long. He's laughing at the e4 Because e6 pawn. is hanging. But not hanging, so uh, it was a tactic. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Let's analyze it and show it. If knight takes, knight takes takes we have knight takes e6 at the end and after captures queen takes we have a double attack on the rook and bishop Although knight f6 there might actually somehow and then, ooh, actually did he not see that well hmm. hold the phone I thought you told me to put my phone away well exactly exactly jen exactly <laughs> so, so what's going on here black is currently up a pawn White has this light square bishop, which is going to be great. Look at a lot of weak light squares for black here. And a lot of weak pawns on light squares, too. Yeah. Maybe bishop g5 ideas for black. Just trade off the bishop. Try to get the knight on d7 to f6 or c5. Hmm. Artemiev, I guess, still, still feeling relatively confident. Mm -hmm. Just even up the match score, two and a half all. And, well, Grishuk will continue to uh, get himself in time trouble. Yeah, but now Artemi have taken a bit of a think. I'm I'm not sure where the tactics should, should go here for black. Do you want the dark square bishops off? Um, or maybe try to do something more aggressive on the queen side? I don't know. I keep wanting to do something while the king is really weirdly vulnerable. Even for this knight on c5. That yeah. was definitely not the move I was expecting. Me neither. Um, Why did you choose that knight? Okay. Well, I think it's because he wants the other the other knight to come to c5 at some point. Yeah, I definitely understand why he's doing what he's doing, but I was not expecting any of this. So that knight uh, c2, you would love to sc scoot it up to c3. Or b5. Exactly. Right. The, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. The ultimate squares you're going for are here. But yeah, this knight is oddly out of place, right? But knight e3 might come, but still, you, you really want to get to b5 now. Yeah. Now that you've committed a5. So it's sort of smart by um, Artemiev to play a5 when the knight can't get to b5. Well, he answers our question like we said. He brought the other knight back because he did want c5 for this pony. And I think there's this long-term positional bind black can get, like a4, hold b3, even e4. So he's trying to get all his pieces on their best squares. They're just trying to live their best life. Here comes e4. Ooh, I that's think he'll a go for a4. Move. Yeah, e4 is the move that you often want to take back because that's a pawn that... Totally, right? Especially if this bishop gets out. That's a pawn that was serving great purpose here. But but black has space. I don't know. I keep liking Artemius' positions more. And it's not just because, like our last stat showed, along with Jan Christoph Duda, they are the highest rated players in the world under the age of 23. So um, if you're wondering how this is a tied match, who's the youngster against Alexander Grishuk? You're looking at the future in Russia. I think you're looking at the present. The future is now. Faruja proved that. Deep. All right, so Knight D3. I, I like Artemio's approach, and I know it's ultra-aggressive. Note the pawn can't be taken because the rook was hanging. Um, it just feels... I'm going to disagree with you. You disagree? You think he overpushed? Okay. I okay. think that Sasha is going to have an attack soon. The White King is much safer. If this d3 pawn is lost, which it looks like it's going down shortly, I'm just not right. seeing what that bishop on e7 is going to do. Is he yelling timber? 
Did you really just do that to me? I sure did. Queen e4, put the rook on d1 and d5. We'll see if you yield timber in a minute. Uh, I still like black. I'm taking black in this game. Okay. I haven't... And you just caught me off guard with that. You're Amazing young. reference. Yeah. Um, knight d4. Although, as I say I like black, I'm starting to regret it. <laughs> because those light squares are like... <laughs> oh, man. I think you should put this rook on d1 and to guard the knight. And then play rook c3. Yep. Oh, we're completing each other's sentences, and it hurts because I just picked black. But then knight might go to e4 to stop rook c3. Yep, there it is. Okay, so now we're switching sides again. And now you like black again. You just have to keep changing your mind. I don't know what's going on with me. Today's one of those days. H7. Mm. Note that everything is guarded, though, right? Yep. We've got the knight on d4 guarding c2. What's your rook doing here? NBD, Doug. Yeah, but there are some ideas with knight f2 at some point. Yeah, I kind of want bishop f4 so I can meet knight f2 with rook c1. Mm. Then queen takes oh, d3. But check. My bad. But you're going to meet knight f2 with rook c3 for the time being. Ah, okay, yeah. So that's the good news. That is the good news. Rook to b3. Give me that b6 pawn. He yeah. wants to, he wants to put his king on the seventh rank so that the f7 pawn might hang with check. That's a great point. Full board awareness. Use it. It's oh. a lot like the force in chess. Um, if you don't use your full board awareness, do, do you lose it? If you don't use your full board awareness, you lose it. That okay. is correct. Yep. Just Thank checking. Thank you for confirming. Um it's Wait. actually true because you can develop your visualization skills. We got a video series on that on chess.com. I did it. It's a great video series, I think. Go check it out. So Queen H three back, I think, is the move here. I I, I kind of wanted F six. Swear to God, I was just about to say that just to open up a more aggressive route for the Queen to return. And again, the light squares are where the tactics are going to happen. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And the Bishop on F eight looks so silly there. Yeah. And if you take, there's even rook back to f3 immediately. Well, your queen's hanging. Besides that. <laughs> right? Knight takes, move the queen. Sorry, move the queen. Oh, queen f5 threatens, queen takes a5 as well in some lines. Yeah. Got to be careful. Also, the time situation favoring Sasha. So rook Sa c7 overprotects mm -hmm. the f7 pawn. So now what's the follow-up here? The good thing about the rook being on c7 is that at some point knight b5 might come with the tempo, but rook e5 is a nice move. Knight is pinned. Now watch, out, watch out for tactics. Now rook c3 is a threat because the knight's pinned. Mm -hmm. That's key. What about d5? Oh, bishop f4! That's no fun. There are two rooks there. Skewer town. Oh, Ooh, he goes for it. Maybe there's something that black can do as like a, a little tricky thing. Oh, or he just missed it. That too. Bishop 4 No. Here comes rook f no, nope. no, then I, no, I, 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 the same I think he there. just missed it. So bishop d6, I guess. Just give up the rook. Uh, get your bishop on e5, hit the f6 pawn, hit the diagonal. Hope that it works out. A lot of wishful thinking. You know? Bishop d6, just play it. I think you have to anyway. Yeah. Exact the exchange, but I think white can play queen d3 at the end he of that moved, line. He moved a bit too slowly there. Like bishop, oh, queen d3, bishop d4. Oh, gosh, that hurts. Oh, wow. Queen's easy Taking with check. check. Ooh. And you're trying to take here. Interesting. But rook f5, that was the key thing that didn't work what before. What about rook d4? Because the knight was here. Oh, wait, f4 is just hanging out. Yeah, right. with tempo on the queen. That's not good. What happened here? We're about to see another time scramble to bring us a result here, everyone. 30 seconds remain for Alexander Gershuk. 18 seconds on the board for Artemiev. Well, that was a huge blunder. Is he going to sack his queen? Bishop takes these. No, you can't do that. <sighs> B6 is hanging. But is it mate? Queen takes f4. Queen takes f4, queen takes b6, and the king runs, and where's the goods? He gets out. Yep. But maybe I can steal some more 24 pawns. 24 seconds to 12 seconds. This is going to be a scramble. Queen takes a5 is possible. Just take it. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a smart decision. Because d4, you push the pawn too far. Put the king on a2. It's actually a practically very difficult position to play for black. Lots of checks. Yep. Lots of weirdness. Um... Queen b4 queen gains a tempo. Oh, that's nice. I would say queen b6, but I like queen b4. Because queen b4 also, yeah. the knight moves to queen f8 check. Yeah, this and then is f7 better. falls. The check there. Now you double. You're trying to corral the d-pawn, and you won't be in danger of losing, in theory. Maybe queen rook g3. Eight. I thought rook g3 instead of rook d3, potentially. So he goes for it the second time now around. now rook d8 is possible. Hmm? Okay, if check, Wait. king d7, queen a4 check, the attack continues. The attack rages on. Yep. 
Yeah, the this time the... scramble is real. You know I like my ex Rook Scramby. Check. Wait. Scrambies. Wait, well, Rook D8 check. Rook D8 check was just winning, dude. Go back and play Rook D8. Okay, oh, he, he doesn't saw let it at the he second time. It. No, it's going to be a draw. It's going to be a draw. Grishik has missed two wins. Two wins oh. in the match so far. If you're just joining us, the last game where Grishik was black, he he let slip away and Artemi have won. Grishuk has uh, has not been as tactically sharp there in the time scrambles. Yeah. Wow. Let's back up on the analysis board and show you why Rook D8 was winning for everyone who may or may not just be joining us. In this position, after King D6, Rook to D8, crushing on the spot. If the king goes to the E file, we win the queen. And if the king goes to the C file, we have... Rook C1? Oh, or Rook, C uh, Rook C1 is actually perfect now because you can't go C2. Yeah. So Rook C1 just wins. Grishuk. Grishuk. I don't know what to say to him. Is he shook? He might be shook. That's the right emphasis <laughs> on the wrong syllable. He he looks pretty, you know. He does not look shook. No, I mean, but uh, that's been two games though. It's it's now it it remains a tied match, but it obviously you know if ifs are always whatever. If my dog was a cat, it'd be a cat, right? So you know <laughs> ifs don't help a lot of people, okay? But in the case where you're looking at some of the strongest chess players in the world, you expect them to convert on those critical moments. And Grishuk has uh, has just not been as sharp there in the time scramble. He has not. But right now with the black pieces, his position is very tricky because his bishop on c8 is stuck there. For the time being, the b7 pawn's under attack. The bishop on g2 better, the much, much, much better than the bishop on c8. And there's an imbalance with the bishop on g7 versus a knight. And there's an isolated pawn for white, but it's very easy for it to, uh, white to defend it. You can go rook to d1 some moment soon. Um, and look at these pawns for black now. Double b pawn. It might even trade itself at some point. The only downside that is the obviously opening the bishop on g7. Right. Yeah, and right away not possible precisely because of that. But okay, if you... Uh, Those b pawns aren't that bad, actually. Hard to attack. They're doubled and isolated, but hard to get. And they do, the fact that they are there means that this rook is open. So. Which might gain black a tempo at some point because yeah. you might play a3 when you'd like to play something else. Right. Force you to play a3, in fact. 17 minutes only remain here in the five minute plus one second increment portion if it happens to be your first speed chess championship. Let's remind you real quick of the format. We have 90 minutes, we're almost done with that, of five minutes as the foundation and then one second increment added back onto the clock with every move. After this, we're going to have an hour of three minutes plus one second added back for every move, and then 30 minutes of bullet. We have a bracket of 16 players. This is the last matchup of the first round, Robert. Can you believe how far we've come, how long it's been? And what are they, uh, what are they playing for? Let's remind them of the prizes real quick. A lot of cash. A lot of cash money. And we see that in the first round here. The winner gets $1,000, and go more importantly – goes on to the quarterfinals, yep. and the, the rest, the another $1,000, gets split by win percentage. So every game is important, altering the win percentage. And then you go on to the quarterfinals, where there's uh, a lot of money there, 12000 total for eight players. And then the semis have 12000 again, but for only four players. And the grand finale, 10K on the line, just two players, one match, lasting several hours. But for the trophy, the grand prize, mm -hmm. the Speed 5K Chess cash plus that Championship. Sum. Yeah, not too bad. And uh, this is our second match of the day. Levon Aronian barely got by Ali Reza Faruja earlier, so we're having a lot of fun. We hope you're enjoying the big, big chess day here on chess.com, and uh, thanks for being with us. All right. So I once thought I said that those meatballs aren't bad when I was referring to the bee <laughs> Those meatballs are bad. Uh, the meatballs aren't bad. I, I could go for some Italian to go. Um, anyway, B4 played. The B-pawns are bad optically, right? But you need ways to attack them. Black would like to put the bishop on C6 and exchange it so that they can maybe even dun undouble. As much as you like B4, you also just weakened your A-pawn. I didn't like B4. I, I was going to say, as much as you like B4 as in the, 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 Generally, the yeah. metaphorical you, right? Because the A-pawn is now weak and you can't move that pawn backward. Watch out for that. But also, instead of B4, it just felt like white could have been more aggressive and perhaps played a move like knight to A4. Okay. Hitting that pawn on b6. Yeah. And I guess you'll go rook d6 out of necessity rather than desire. And maybe that's okay. But it just looks so weird. Um, yeah, I agree. And you also open up the c7 square. Yeah. So maybe that was better. Okay, he didn't. 
Instead, he played b4, and uh, we had bishop d7, and after d5, the exchange is on. The one thing you can say for uh, Artemiev is that if the simplification continues, these pawns are much weaker than the b and a pawn. Black kind of needs some pressure here. So if, if white gets more access, look for these pawns to start being real targets. Although bishop b2 is an idea that you have to keep in mind, hitting mm -hmm. the a3 pawn and the rook at the same time. I think we'll see king f1 here. Um, and then bishop b2. Right, and then rook c7. Then if you take, I hit f7 at the end. Yeah, that's annoying. Why you gotta do that to me? Why you gotta be so rude? I'm human too. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be rude on that seventh rank for that king. Uh, Actually, that doesn't look bad for black though. So bishop b2. Okay, let's do it. Rook c7, mm -hmm. and can I go bishop e6? You're gonna force me to win a piece. Oh, it's dead. <laughs> Lol. I was testing you. You barely passed. F plus. Knight f4 instead. Yeah, that's a good move though. But I'm gonna force yeah. you. To win and you're a piece. you're still in trouble. <laughs> that was an amazing line. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Yeah. You give me no choice but to win material. You give me no choice but to uh, crush you. Um, huh. So what to do now? It feels like black should be okay, but you need some precise moves. Okay, he's going to take with the bishop, I assume, because of the threat of rook c7, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe taking with the rook is also possible. Yeah, okay, he goes forward because I think now when you get the rook down... You have double threats on f7 and b7 as the rooks simplify themselves. So, <laughs> so rook c8 played, ch challenging for the c-file. You, if you leave the c-file, I could probably put my rook on c2 and just challenge your knight on e2. The bishop on g7 is a great piece. Yeah, really, the best really nice. piece on the board, really. Yep. Okay, so... Grishuk has... Uh, trade. So rook... I'm going to go rook b5 because you have b6 and yep. b7 at the same time, but your knight on e2 is very vulnerable. Your back rank isn't doing so hot either. You can just take on e2 and play rook c2 check. If you take on e2, you should probably make a draw opposite colored bishops. Doesn't seem to be too difficult. Right. Should simplify itself out. And rook a8. Nice move. Is Grishuk... Going to try to push this? Yeah, He's up he on the clock now, is. and suddenly the transition is real. The bishop pair, by far the better pieces here in the open position, if we want to remind everybody about why the bishop pair are what they are, right? This is an open board where they thrive. Too many diagonals. Hardly enough time for white to deal with it. In fact, how do you deal with the a-pawn? If you put the rook on a2, then the bishop comes to e6, and actually you can't even stay there. This is, this is, uh, this is why the bishop pair are dangerous. So he gives up the a3 pawn and takes the b7 pawn, but now b4 is clearly weak. Rook b3 next is going to yep. be a move. You can't go f3 here, because now f3 is hanging, thanks to the bishop and rook teaming up on the square. And the knight doesn't have any great square to go to. Maybe knight f4, but... Looks this is a good move, though, from a prophylaxis. Overprotecting, preventing bishop h3, right? Yeah. yeah, that's actually a very good move. I like it. The bishop on b7 is so vital here. It protects the f3 square. And yeah, it's not just not enough material left for Black to uh, claim to have any TV. real winning chances. Okay, let's go Rook B three as you were suggesting though. Okay, so Rook B three, maybe Pawn F three there. Is that possible? The bishop this comes to E six, and you still got to guard B four. I'll go Knight D four there. Okay, and if I trade, you're taking e6 and saying it's a draw. Ops good bishops. Or I'm checkmating you with knight c6, rook d8, mate. Oh, you have rook b2! You got fortunate. Ah, uh, yeah, simplify. Let's show everybody the line we're talking about. We're getting too far in our analysis. I would say our grandmaster heads, but we know I'm not one. Knight d4. No, f3 first. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Duh. Oh, f but knight d4 might be good. Yeah, hey. actually right away. Accidentally played a better move. Yep. The point is now if you take, again, Robert's idea was that you hit the rook and this is mate. You this take away the e7 square yeah. from the king. The knight guards it. So that was his, his tactic that we were analyzing in our head there. And uh, if you take here, now I take actually with a tempo, guarding it and hitting the bishop, so even better. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're kind of getting that idea, knight d4, although with the bishop on e5, the king can escape. So no longer mating nets um, for Grishuk to worry about. Say that again? 
The king's on f8. king's on f8. No, no. The the difference is the bishop was still on g7. The king can't go. The king's on f8. He can't go to h7. Right. We're good. Good mate. Um, so knight d4 played here, and the threat maybe. What is Grishuk thinking about? Um. Hmm. It's a great question. Does he know it's his move? Okay, win h5. Now you can go h4. Yeah, or h3 first. Yep. The trade. Okay, I think we're going to get a peaceful result here as much as this has been a uh, a thrilling back and forth game here. Said with only a hint of sarcasm. <laughs> um, and uh, we appreciate the... Uh, the questions in chat. Yeah, no, it's important. We want to break down all the all the uh, the basic ideas here, but in the end, it looks like the simplification is just going to lead to peace. But you have to be a little careful for White. First, your time. I don't know what he's thinking about, but you can't go Rook D6 here. Okay. You could have tried it, but you can get yourself into more trouble than you realize in some of these end games. Yeah, it's true. Because once the pawns are separated, you've got all kinds of weaknesses here, right? Rook's coming in. But you know, Rook B3 here. Okay, King E5 makes sense. Maybe H4. Yeah, Ooh, he does it. Right, as I played it, actually. No, he didn't. I played it. <laughs> LOL. Four seconds. Um, Rook B3. Ten seconds to five seconds. Play King D5. I still expect a draw, but because time scrambles are about to happen, don't don't uh, look away. Maybe we'll see something wild. That's essentially a draw off of repeat. Oh, go B5 there. Oh, he does it the second time. My King D5. The thing is, I'm not sure if it's King D5, Rook F6. You you get the B pawn, but you give up the G pawn. Mm -hmm. I don't know who that favors. Right. White king brings C2. the king over to free the rook. Now that the king guards the pawn, the rook can do things. But rook F1. Mm -hmm. Or Rook C4. You do not want to put the rook on G4. It's a very weird spot for it. Yeah. It defends everything. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Who's going to win in the king of pawning if you had to go for it? Now he loses the B pawn. Rook king e C6 would have allowed Rook C8, everybody. And Artemiev is one upon. Will it be enough to win the game? Wow, I cannot Only believe Only two seconds minutes. left. Rook of one. Grishuk. That way if you go B70, Rook B1 check. Check. Keep checking and then put your Rook behind the B pawn. Yep. Oh, that you just king allowed e it. That was a huge mistake. Yeah, but the King's going up. King E3. I know. I was going to say, like, now who's winning? Um, Look at the time. He has no time. He's going to get himself mated. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was going to King F3 first. King F3 first or King D3. Yep. Point five. he made it. The server... <laughs> Gives him the increment back, and are we going to just... Uh, wow. They were both like, you know what, dude? I just don't have the energy for this. Give me the draw here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Six minutes left. This, you said in the last match, we were wondering how many total games were played. That being, of course, Aronian versus Ferrugia. If you missed it, shame on you. But this match has really had very few games played. Yeah. This has been a total of... Seven. Seven games in the five-minute portion. Is that about... about that's like less than average. That's less than average, right? Yeah. It feels like these games have been really long. Yeah, they have been. I mean, we, yeah. just, we saw um, Aronian beat Frugia 7-2, so they had nine yep. games. And I feel like that's more normal. We can get our you know, smarter mm -hmm. chess statistician on it to see yep. what the average number of Let's games is. Let's get him is. to do something. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Robert Hess anagram of the day becomes beer shorts. <laughs> Today's show brought to you by Jambies. <laughs> You can now put a beer in your shorts. I love it. You reference in the Jambies. That's I show right. you Jambies. Jambies. They're super oh, comfy. My buddy will be so happy you mentioned Jambies. There you go. Someone clipped that for Robert. Um, <laughs> Jambies. But speaking of beer shorts, that, that could be a new nickname for you. It works. <laughs> Next time you wear your jams, your jammy jams. All right. 94 is played. What do we got here? Like a weird Grunfeld. Normally you see this with the bishop here. Yeah. Like what, What's going on here? Okay, so if you take on c3, white takes the pawn back, you win the d5 pawn, but white is generally happy about the structural change. Cause you've <laughs> Nick is going to be so mad that just gave free huge advertising to 10,000 viewers <laughs> to your buddy. He's not going to be mad. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Obviously. No. He, he better appreciate Jambies. Of course he's going to appreciate Jambies. Nick, you should get a pair of Jambies. <laughs> 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 All right, Bishop of four. Bring the queen up. Try to get a big center. Yeah, go e3. Maybe g3. Ooh. You know I like that. Just to challenge the, you know, you're yeah. saying the queen shouldn't be ahead of the bishop when there's a bishop 
challenging that diagonal. Interesting. E3 instead. Now he'll put the bishop on g3, indeed. Because the trade will help the h file. And I guess he just wants bishop d3 and e4. And the one thing about his move order is it opens up c4 in some positions. Yeah. Instead of g3. Definitely. Okay. Rekarovka, and then you can push either pawn. I like this for Grishuk, actually. Yeah, no, it's... The problem for black is you always have to be worried about which pawn is going to push yep. and um, how you're going to deal with it. So the, the, the issue for white is you can't move this knight on f3. You want to play knight e5, but you lose the g2 pawn. Mm -hmm. so and if you castle and move the knight, you get mated. Yeah. You heard it here, kids. You also heard it. The stat man working fast for us. 9.2 is the average number of games played. We have a lot of history now in this Peaches Championship. It's been a few years, so... That kind of makes stats even cooler. I really do like that. The more we do this, like now we're referencing like the great match of 2016, you know, Aronian Grishuk, which was a great match, yeah. by the way. Um, but uh, yeah, so 9.2 is the average games in the five minute portion. So we're a little behind, not that far. Yeah. This is our eighth game, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. I like how Grishuk also, he's he, he was really large, like his face was in front of the camera before. Yeah. And now he's hiding from you. He's gone back. Yeah. All right, so the knight on e4, this makes a lot of sense. You have a bishop and queen on the diagonal. You might as well plug the square. And Spy h7. Yeah. and Also, this is a threat. This is a real threat, even with check. King e2, and you may you may be in trouble here. Yeah, that knight may have wanted too far. So yeah, and a5 takes away the square for the queen, right? So that makes c4 even more likely. Yeah, and a note for some of our less experienced viewers, taking on g3 is generally speaking, a bad decision when there's a rook still on h1. Yep. It, regardless of the fact that I can take with check, if you if, when you take here, the h file being open is a, is usually frowned upon. Yes. And here it definitely is because the h7 pawn is hanging first. So what is he going to do? a6, you have to consider it for white, right? At some point, black... Oh, I love that move, actually. Like, a6 and c4 are coming. It just doesn't feel... In fact, so much so that he plays b5. We called it, I think. I think White will White will get castled now, but yeah, we've got now a castle. Yeah, a6 with Tempe, get castled, then go to work with Rook a5 and c4. Mm hmm I don't know why I'm saying that. Yeah, you got so quiet on me. Just castle. Yeah, castle. Is there some... the reason why he doesn't want to is because when the trade happens on g3, he still loves the idea of opening the rook. So right. he's he's trying to keep that rook on that potentially dangerous h file for as long as possible. Oh, and I was talking about how you couldn't move that knight because the g2 pawn was hanging, but now there's a knight blocking the queen's access to g2. The knight e5 jump makes a lot of sense. Hitting this bishop on c6, you can't yeah, afford to lose that nice. one. But you don't really want to give up your dark square bishop either. So this is a nice advantage for Grishuk here. And f3 is a threat, kicking the knight away. I love e3. I mean f3, yeah. Uh-oh. This smells like trouble for... Grishuk. Yeah, our on the grind. Bishop takes c7. Go get yourself a pawn, big guy. But then rook f to c8 and the c3 But then pawn. f3, anyway. Because hmm. I take the knight while you get my bishop. You, you, it's a fair point. Yeah, right? So what are you, I you know you like it. Starting with f3 also? f3 right away. Also interesting. But I just don't see why not grab the pawn when you can't really stop f3. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Grishuk is uh, thinking about it. The one issue with f3 right away, let's analyze it, when you take and take, as good as this looks, the f-file prevents you from getting castled. Right. That could be a little irritating, right? So if... F oh, he does it. But I'll take with the bishop on in, e4. In my line... In my line, there's no open f-file. I don't know. You right, know, I know I was... I'll take with the bishop on e4. Oh, yeah. Right, even better. Now maybe take c7. h4 is another move that comes to mind, but perhaps it doesn't work. That would have been a fun move by you. Okay, I do like taking c7, because guess what's coming next? What about knight takes f3 at some moment, though? That's you might have to. You're, I think I think Artemiev is losing this game and going to send Grishuk into the three-minute portion with a one-game lead, because I'm liking, liking Sasha's approach here. I guess the problem with knight takes f3 is I can just take it, right? Especially now yeah, that my bishop's on f4. It's a piece, right? Yep. Hmm. Well, we have the closing time for the five-minute segment. Don't get semi-sonic on me, but uh, I think that uh, I can call this one. Grishuk is going to have a one-game lead as we head into the uh, three-minute portion. Although he has had great positions in earlier games, and somehow I, I don't know why. I, I guess I'm calling a little too early. You're right, but he's up on the clock as well, and just a great spot. Bishop pair, extra pawn. The one problem in the position is the c3 pawn. Mm -hmm. But that pawn on e4 and d4. 
That looks pretty nice. Thank you for the sub there, Matt. Appreciate the two months. It means you're new to the channel. Thanks for being here. Takes. Put the queen on d2. Wow. F5. He's all in. He has to be, but he is all in. So what do you do about this? If you take on f5... And then take on e5. Just take it all. <laughs> Seriously. You're so greedy. The sub love. Thanks, everybody. Um, no, I think take and take. Everything. He's going to do it. Okay. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. Hey. Queen c5 check. Take the pawn Why back. not take the pawns, Kramer? Why does Rupia make you burp? It's just winning. <laughs> All right. A lot of pawns. Ooh, g4. Look at That's him. That's actually nice. Because if you take a 5, you take a 3. But what if you go f4 and just say... Hold e5. Say... I got the, I got you. Oh, actually, f4 runs right into uh, f takes e4. Ah, and then queen c5 check, and you win yeah. the pawn. Ah, very nice. Okay, we'll uh, we'll show that in a second. But that uh, actually I'll show it now. What the heck? Let's back this thing up and show the tactic that Robert just spotted. If f4 takes here, and when you take with tempo, the queen gets check, and then f4 falls. That's not what White would have wanted. Nope. So okay, we're. Uh... Although I'm not positive White really wanted this either. He's still up the e pawn, right? But g6 is coming to undermine the defense. Ah, good point. Now you have to get something quickly, right? You, how do you do it? Actually, it's hard to get a. I mean, if you have a rook here, it's over, right? Right. But and king takes g2, rook e5. Ah, uh, maybe this move, preventing g6, take with the rook. I mm, like that. But it's still rook e5. Okay, rook a, rook a2, rook e5. I put the oh, dirty dog. <laughs> Bishop c6 there. I protect my very nice pass g2 pawn. Man, this has become much more unclear. Yeah. Krishuk has, uh, has not shown the best technique here, and we already know he's missed a couple wins. And if, we're, if you're just joining us, we're not just saying that. He literally had a couple of games that were one move away from a victory, one of them which he lost. So Krishuk is uh, maybe maybe going to find himself in the three minutes as far as total form. Overall, I mean, I'm not trying to make the storyline like Krishuk, whatever, but it, it does feel like Sasha has played a little bit better yeah, to has. this point. And so even though the match is tied, if you're just getting here, that's kind of why the tone seems to be like Grishuk is letting it getting away right now. That can always change, right? As the time controls get faster, maybe our Timiev gets better. So Rook E5, he's planning to be there with a Rook B4, perhaps? Just okay, to... right. Still Sit looks tight. awkward. And if you can take, take... Bring the king up, But right? as soon as you take on g2 with your king, I'll take on e4. That's always my point. Ah, very nice. Very nice. Oh, he's going to bishop g4 to take f5? Is... Hmm. Yeah, bishop g4 to take f5. Again, thanks for the subs there. Um. Maybe h3 as slow as that is. <laughs> what do you think? That would be the highest class waiting move. Mm -hmm. Probably rook e5 still, maybe? I say very unconfidently. So he allowed it. And rook f1. No, but rook f1 is bishop takes f5. Yeah, but there's... Rook takes f5 and e7 in some weird position. Yeah, you get away with it. Oh. He goes for it. Bishop takes f5. Or, or rook takes... But now I take with that rook, the f rook. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but in the end, takes e7, rook e5, rook takes b5, rook e7, rook b7. Oh, that's really nice. That's really nice. Yeah. E seven, king of seven. Oh, king of seven saves your day. So is it, what? Oh, one? That's actually key. So he'll play maybe, rook D one first. Maybe play C four here. C four. No, C four was a good move. C four takes. Oh, then rook B eight check first. and E seven. Yeah. Okay, we got to back up and show that Robert's move. I think was winning. I, he played my rook D one, but C four. The point of everyone was on takes. You have check first, and then when the king moves, E seven wins on the spot. But after check, maybe you have rook F eight there. Ah, maybe why? So maybe rook d1 oh my gosh. is the best chance. Okay, he does end up getting a7, so Sasha has winning chances, although, again, maybe not as good as he would have liked. Yeah, rook c6 here. You're going to win the c3 pawn. Eight seconds for Gershuk versus 20 seconds for Artemiev. This has been a this has been a great match. I mean, this is no one wiggling themselves to a, to a real lead yet. Rook c6. Do it. Rook c6, force a7, then put the rook on a6. Oh, that's actually a good move because if king f3, now you go rook c6 and take Tempo with check. With check. Very nice. Look at look at it go. He's the, going on the first yeah, rank but on the purpose. problem is it forces the king out. Now rook h6, but it doesn't work. a7. Qb3. Oh, a, king if he takes qb3 and he loses. 
Yep. He's going to win. So king b3. And if rook a4, win. he's going to go rook a4, c4 is going to happen. What a move. Rook a4, c4. You can't take with the pawn because the rook, and you can't take with the rook because the rook moves and you get a queen. There it c4. is. C4. King c5 b4. resigns. Or king, yeah. Rook. C5 resigns. <laughs> Called it. Nailed it. We are going to have our first break. The Speed Chess Championship action continues. Our double header second match is underway. With that, we have a four and a half, three and a half lead for Alexander Grishuk. We're going to take a very, very quick break. And when we get back, all 9,383 of you will be here because if not, you're hurting Robert's feelings.
A premium membership at chess.com will help you improve your game with full access to a powerful set of learning tools. Unlimited tactics let you practice like a master with more than 50,000 puzzles to challenge you at every level. Our library of interactive chess lessons created by master coaches will enhance every aspect of your game. And after each game you play, the computer analysis feature will give you feedback on every move you played, turning every game into a chance to learn. And that's not all. Premium benefits also include unlimited tournaments, video lessons, the opening explorer, and much, much more. Upgrade now to take your game to the next level. And we are back with the 2019 Speed Chess Championship. Our second match of the day continues on. Of course, we have Vladislav Artemyev versus Alexander Grishuk. And uh, the five-minute portion did not disappoint, uh, not just our, uh, our perspective as chess fans, but also the smarter chess predictions, pretty much right in line with uh, what we thought it was going to be. So we're going to get ready here <clears throat> for the three-minute portion to begin. Our players have taken their seats from their break, and... Uh, the games will be taken off here any moment. Any moment, Robert. Artemiev you... looks like he might be asleep there. I was just trying to figure out if you know, I could see him blinking or something. Yeah, there he's moving. He's, uh, he's, he's really trying to give space. Space <laughs> between him and the camera. Yep. You know, the camera likes his space. So the games should begin here any second. And, uh, Robert, any, any other takeaways? Obviously, the scoreboard tells us exactly what you need to know. Right, the most concrete point of view as well. Grishuk has a one-game lead, but any other takeaways uh, from the five-minute portion about how the players are playing? Yeah, it's been interesting to see how Artemiev has played, especially with the white side. He's playing g3, bishop g2, b3, bishop b2. He's not going for sort of mainstream theory. Right. And I can't help but wonder if that's hurting him in this match yeah. thus far, because Grishuk is not the type of player, he's going to spend his time regardless. Right. And he's not the type of player who is going to be shocked by you playing B3. Or he's played Hikari Nakamura enough times to mm -hmm. know how to handle it. And so it seems like he's been doing just fine with the black pieces, which, um, well, it's not going to be a good thing for Artemiev going down uh, the stretch of this match. Well, we talk about that a lot, and you and I know that of all the players who come into the Speech Chess Championship every year, Sasha Grishuk is probably somebody who takes it as seriously as anybody, yeah. right? So uh, we're just being a little critical of the fact that when you're facing a guy like this, you really need to play your main openings, play your theory, right? Uh, you're not you're not uh, looking to trick him into some sort of sideline blitz specialty stuff. And so um, Artemiev not doing that necessarily with uh, <clears throat> with his approach in the uh, in the match so far. Although as you look at this one here, what's going on? We've got a weird kind of double fiend kettle ready, but still something that we would really kind of like uh, Grishuk's position, honestly. Yeah, because two, two big pawns in the center. It doesn't seem hard for Black to kind of defend the position. The pawn on c2 is a potential liability that requires defense as the queen is staring it down. Rook c1 followed by c4 is an option for white at some point, but... Or c4 right away, apparently. According to uh, Artemiev, he's not that worried about the isolated c-pawn. I'm uh, wondering if he'll be proven wrong. Yeah, like bishop g4 is just one option yeah, here. You might want to try to sack it at some point, so okay. I was wondering if you want to go out of your way to play b6, but the problem was there were diagonal tactics. So bishop f5 first, a threat maybe if uh, if white plays something like rook c1, is put the rook on c8, which one, maybe this one. Yeah, you could also put your bishop on e4 at the right moment. Mm -hmm. say, you know, Close like, off the diagonal. Yeah. And the thing is the e5 pawn is defended for the time being. If you go c5, I can even consider taking it on c5. And just saying, you know, you get my e-pawn, I get your c-pawn, but we have this kind of Grunfeldish yeah. ending with a two-on-one two on, on the, one queen, on the side. queen side. I like it. Here's queen to b3. Played now, and uh, Grishuk immediately responds with bishop to e4. So what c5, okay, but this is what we were just talking about. It's a different, you know, slightly different position because the queen moved instead of a rook, but take on c5. I would take that. Bishop takes c5. Yeah, I mean, plus if the trade happens on e5 and you end up trading off the light square bishops, that probably helps Black as well. Yeah, it's some attacking possibilities mm -hmm. because typically when you have a fianchetto, when there's the bishop in, on g2 or on b2, you want to keep it in front of your king to help defend the, some of the squares that are now more vulnerable. So if you just imagine that bishop just disappears, h3, f3 uh, become targets. We don't have to imagine anymore. We don't. The bishop is gone, right? The bishop is gone. What about just queen takes c5 here? Uh, queen takes c5. The rook comes to c1 and hits the bishop. But then so queen b6 or something. Queen b6, okay. Defend the bishop and trade queens. Although if we trade then, in the end, e5 falls. 
right? That's true. Because uh, that's a better version for white. That's for yeah. sure. So you got to be a little careful. Maybe even a move like g6 first. Oh, well, he has more aggressive intentions in mind. In fact, he wants to take b7, sorry, take c5 with the knight. Yep. And where's his queen going? Knight f5, you can throw in at some moment. So you always have to be careful as black. Watch out for knight f5 as yep. a tactical shot hitting the queen on e7. And she's guarding a lot of things right now, so that would be ill-advised to allow the knight to come to f5. Actually, knight f5 is, yeah, is a huge yeah, threat. Yeah, how, how do you deal with it? You might even play bishop b6 now because of it. So rook c8. Rook c8. Wait, so knight f5? What's oh, knight some kind of five. queen e6 or something like yeah, that? Yeah, queen e6 is just a big trade, I guess. Ooh, Ooh but bishop a3. And again, everyone, if knight f5, we're thinking queen e6. Although now I'm not so sure because queen takes e6 would be a problem. Yeah, so you have to move somewhere else. G5, okay. That's the answer. Maybe E4. E4 looks reasonable. I, I have a hard time deciding who let their initiative escape there, honestly. Seems like black is doing quite decently here. Yeah. But watch out for that E7 square, right? White yeah. would love to kick the queen out from the G5 square to, to mm -hmm. get access to E7. H4 was a possibility. H4 for does just that, maybe, right? Ten feet the queen. But okay, h4, queen f6, and where's the follow-up? Yeah, Pursuit puts the queen there right away. Yep. Looks pretty steady. What if you take on c5 and just try to play with a knight? The problem is your knight doesn't get to d5 quickly enough. Yeah. You want your knight on d5 if you're going to play against a bishop. Well, I could just put it there. Just one time. <laughs> no, I'll let it slide. Let me move illegally. Just one time. Okay. I'll let it slide. All right, so tactics available? No. Knight h6 check, king g7. Guarding the queen and not a not a lot to it. Now the question is, does Black want the ladies off the board? I guess so. Answers that question to make sure he can bring his king quickly to e6. Okay, checks out. I think that the end game looks to be roughly equal. Yep. And again, you, I'm looking at these ideas. The bishop takes c5 and getting my knight into the game, but the bishop can just sit on e7. The king will run to e6 for Black, and it seems like all is okay. So the now. So good. <clears throat> I was going to say, the D-file is on for black, but the C-file has to be dealt with. I uh, have this feeling that oh. Grishuk's endgame oh. will be a little bit better here. Okay, I'm the F6 pawn is not really under fire, because I can pin it and win it. Now watch out the time. 13 Ooh, seconds. 13 seconds for Grishuk. I wasn't paying attention Ooh, to that. Oh, if King G2, Rook D2 happens. So you have King E2, which is much better. Yeah, King G2, Rook D2 would have allowed Bishop takes E3 as a threat. Okay, so right as I say, I think Rashuk will get a better version of this endgame. Apparently, bishop e7 being allowed was a blunder, because f6 falling is not ideal. Yeah, this is you not can even good. play bishop h4 now, if you're Artemyev, bring it to g3. And the thing is, it's not so easy to convert this. You're up one pawn as white, but, but you the, don't have... But the, the time, I guess. The time know. is huge. The time yep. is huge. Uh, but the problem for white as well is, like, rook a5 at some moment will force you to, your rook to be tied down to the defense of the uh, a2 pawn. Hmm. And... Something that's probably not now worth noting yet, but you know how I always talk about this, is the A2 pawn, the A8 corner, in some mm -hmm. circumstances... Not the same color as the bishop, not in Kansas. Not anymore, at least. Yep. Here comes F4, I think, or Rook H4. Oh, Rook H4 definitely has... Hit H7. But the Knight B5 is a little loose. Yeah, so he plays Knight C3 first, then I think we'll get back to this idea. Very difficult to hold this position, less than five seconds. Yeah, had to do something. A5 was a big threat to remove the guard of the knight in C5. And now the knight's trying to go to D6, I guess, but even still there, it's not fun. Artemiev just seems super patient, super poised, knows that he doesn't have to do too much to win this game because Grishuk's time pressure may end up winning the game for him. Yep. So he's just kind of sitting tight here, doesn't even go for rook H4, keeps the rook in its most flexible spots. I like uh, just good technique, right? Yeah. Just not being overly committed to the winning plan. Knight D4, oh, rook C6. Rook C6 is just as good. Knight D oh, just wins pawn's the pawn. Hand. I didn't realize the pawn was hanging. I was yep. like, Rook knight A8. D4. Unless there's something better, but Knight... Oh, he has Rook C6. Okay. Oh. Gonna, he can trade, though. Put the Knight on B5, and you still got an E pawn yeah, that we know how to push. Definitely do. We're about to see this match leveled up. So A5 here? Just push that thing. I like oh. how Grishuk is like... Fending this off, though. With getting... very few uh, very few seconds. He's got one second, Dan, right? Thanks for being yeah. obvious. Um, no, but seriously, he is defending really well. I mean, keep waiting for this one to be over, but uh, Artemiev has not leveled the score yet, and now he's down to three seconds. 
Grishuk's really doing an excellent job. He should. I mean, our team should G1. still win, but look at no, this. No, watch out for that. H oh, 98, though. But H2 take falls. H2 falls. E6. Bish King D6 works. Yeah, E7, the A6. That's it. And then the A-pawn runs. Wow. What a finish. Oh, my gosh. No, it's... Wait. Okay, there it is. That's the final touch you needed. Yeah, and it's 6-1. Okay, and the reason, everybody, uh, once the next game gets underway, we'll uh, we'll bring up the analysis board. But the reason is that, uh, there we go, we'll, we'll bring up the analysis board here and show you, is that in this final spot, black can't pass. If the bishop moves over here, we have a 7. Uh, if the king moves back, we get the king in, and eventually to b7. So um, there you have it. That is why it ended the way it did, and that is why... As we come back to the live game, we have a tied match. Look at that. They said this was going to be a nail-biter. By they, I mean us. Mm -hmm. And by us, I mean we. And by we, we said it was going to be a nail-biter. And by we, do you mean French for yes? I mean the royal we, the collective unit. French is pretty royal language. <sighs> Focus on the chess <laughs> game, Dan. That was, that was also your nickname <laughs> in high school. Also the nickname in high school. <laughs> This One of the only real nicknames I had. Focus on your chess game, Dan. <laughs> this opening is very strange mm -hmm. because white has a pawn a5. It looks like white's made like four extra moves. Black is currently up a pawn. It's this double c pawn that just was captured. And now this b6 square is extremely vulnerable. If that knight can land on b6 and that rook has to send a7, black is not going to be very happy. So now it can sit on b8, which is a much better square. So he's not going to put knight b6 just yet. Probably could play g3. Oh, D4 is hanging. Never mind. Yeah, a lot of pressure here on. Forgot D4. about that. So you go D5. Oh, hey, I was right. Yeah. G3 played. I like it. He's just saying I'm gonna sacrifice a pawn if need be and just develop very quickly, but this looks a bit suspicious. So Bishop C5 here, can't even castle because you'd be castling into a discovery. E3, Queen G4, maybe. Hmm. There's also knight e4. Knight e4 allows bishop b4 check. Yeah, and then I move my king. Because I'm threading things like queen a4 check to pick up your bishop. It's true. All right, this is the first idea, and I think this makes sense. Because um, you can even trade queens. I think you can trade. You can take on c6, or you go knight c6, and then trade queens and mm -hmm. play with the advanced queen side. So that's okay, why. So the knight goes to f5 instead. So take on uh, d8. Take on d8, play knight. Uh, or just king e2 and guard yeah, the pawn, actually. I like it. And then put one rook on c1, run, one he rook on d1. It. Take and bake, king e2. There it is. Look, as I'm playing it, he played it. I've played him faster, Grishuk. <laughs> Take that. Rook, yeah, but rook hd1, rook ac1. Not going to be too fun. Uh, rhyme time. <laughs> I don't know if you did that on purpose or not, but good job. Rhyme time. You'll never know. Some people call Deion Sanders prime time, then they call me rhyme time. <laughs> <laughs> the rules are reversing here. I don't know what to do with you. I'm trying to focus on the D file. Put the bishop back. <clears throat> Put a rook on D1. And now it's even material again. Yeah, the knight's coming to E5. The pawn A5 is great. It just really cements that pawn on A6. Holds it's everything like, down. Limits the bishop on C5. Can't go to B6 ever. Maybe my knight can go to B6 at some moment. All right, so let's take it. Ah, but the king's going to e7 at the end of this. And yeah, and everything's protected. Mm -hmm. and the bishops might uh, be very strong. And actually, the pawn on b2 is going to be a big weakness to some of these lines. Which is why he played knight e5 and didn't just trade. Yeah. Because the prospect of king e7, rook to b8, wouldn't have been too fun. Yeah, somehow our team was uh, coordinating just in time, actually. Because you can still play king e7. Yep. But knight d3 is a little scary. Ah, suddenly that bishop... Out of sorts. In fact, there's threats of b4 after knight d3. Mm -hmm. hmm. <laughs> Danny used to be known as Jug of Water Danny, so they wouldn't confuse him with the other Dannys in the class. <laughs> ah. So let's see. What's What can Artemi do here? He's spending a lot of time on this move. And he's now down 30 seconds, which is a minute left. Yeah, the uh, three-minute portion, not as much time to figure out these critical moments. Big Vlad needs to get the memo. The new Big Vlad from Russia <laughs> will never be as good as the old Big Vlad. I love you, Kramnik. <laughs> you really do, though. I do. 93. Yeah. 
mean, knight d3 just seems... I think we'll get knight... Ooh, he takes the bishop here, probably because knight d3 was met by knight e4 and saved the bishop. So he didn't like that. Just He's going to poke at that pawn on a6. Yeah. Knight a4 here is possible. You can't take an a5 because knight c5 check. Bring the knight to b6. Mm -hmm. Or put the rook on c1. Both seem logical. Yeah. Knight, knight b6, b6 guard c8. But so. rook b8, now throwing bishop takes a5. Removing the guard of this bishop. Excuse me, of this knight. That's actually... Uh, Grishuk actually shakes his head like, what was I thinking? Listen to Danny. <laughs> Why did I put the knight there? That was that was actually just a blunder. Ooh, we have a question from Daryl Morey. How many seconds equals a pawn when under one minute on both sides? That's a great question. And exactly what we would think the uh, general manager of the Houston Rockets would uh, would think about. Always trying to look for that statistical edge. And we know the answer, Daryl, and we're not going to tell yeah, you. I was going to say, you know, we need the advantage over other broadcasts. You yeah, figure it out. We're not going to tell you the, the answer. Our analytics team would advise us not to share that information with the general manager of the Houston Rockets. He's going to love that. <laughs> All right, look at this. The, uh, <clears throat> Leela doesn't speak human yet, Daryl. All right, rook to b4. It's starting to look good for black. Oh, h7 is hanging, and you're not going full Fisher. Yeah, no way to trap the bishop, although f5 would be an irritating move. That's true. Can't, can't uh, get that bishop back as fast as you'd like. He saves the h fawn. Okay, but white has sort of weathered the storm. I think we're likely headed for a peaceful result given the opposite code bishop nature of this one, but who knows. The bishop on c4 is excellent. Yeah, and if you could get pressure on e6, he yep. does it. I like it. Double, because you're threatening both a doubling and a fourth rank poking. It doesn't sound fun. Classic Daryl. Thank you for the subs, Daryl. You're the man. Supporting the channel. We love you, buddy. Yeah, rook d4 w wouldn't have been playable because bishop e5. So you have to be careful. Oh, whenever, the skewer. Whenever your opponent is a bishop, you want to lo always look if you're putting your piece on a color square um, of that bishop just to. The time. Yeah. The time pressure. H4 is a big threat. Hess does need subs if that's one thing he needs. I need subs for yeah. what? This isn't my channel. Uh, hey, this is your channel. No, it's not. Nice try, though. <laughs> You're like, this is your channel, so people get gift subs. <laughs> LOL. Um, rook to b3 threatens b5. Uh oh But look at black. Just Bishop d... Oh, there was no a6 capture possible? Because you had bishop e2. Oh, no, rook c2 rook check. Okay, yeah, okay. Rook c2! Takes it now. Rook c2, bishop e2, though. He's just fine. Bishop c3? Okay, no, he gets... he's fine. <gasps> ah! Do you see Grishuk's reaction? Yeah. Oh my! Oh my God! That's what that's what I do. That's my job to freak oh. out on camera. Oh, Krishuk, not thrilled with that right there. He was trying to move, and the time ran out. Wow. Um. Wow. We have two victories in a row now for Artemiev. Not a game that was supposed to be won by Black. At least not like that. We yeah. didn't expect it to happen, right? But that's why it's speed chess. The time pressure is real. He's going back to his uh, Nakamura roots here with a little B3 action. Yeah. He didn't start with B3, but he got there. Well, anyway. I mean, if he continues to do this, I, I'm not going to – I am not. I just, I don't think it's going to be great results. All right, he's up a game right now in the match, five and a half, four and a half, but I just don't think the repertoire is uh, something he should be should be using. Grishuk going to play main lines and challenge it. I mean, what, don't you look at the position and say black is already at least equal here? Yeah. He's doing fine. Black is very solid. Right. So, all right, well – Obviously, as games like that just proved, the opening is only a very small part of it. Yep. Right. And Daryl said uh, Grishuk, Grishuk should pull out his hammer. Yeah. Go to go to town. Hit, call up his buddy Vlad Dobrov and uh, ask for the hammer. Dobrov. Nikolaj. 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 All right, we're done. I love that <laughs> show. Um. So let's see. What's going on with B four? So you have this two on one advantage on the A and B files for black. Um, and the C pawn, at some point, can push to C5 to cut off the bishop from the action. But at the same time, if you push D5, it becomes a target. Mm -hmm. So I like knight D4 much better. Yeah. And let's see. Queen C8? Got to protect that knight somehow. Right? Yeah, and Queen C7 would have allowed knight B5 with tempo. Queen C8 makes sense. I think C5 might be coming. Yeah. 
Especially now that the queen is on the C file, you know, you, you don't really want to allow a rook then to come to C1 and put pressure on that queen. So let's see. What does Sib Elephant mean? It means Siberian Elephant. Thank you for the question and for answering that, Robert. You're very welcome, Danny. A3. I don't know where that tone was coming from, but okay. From one friend to another. <laughs> so let's see. Um, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing? What are you laughing about? <laughs> <laughs> Just it was like I was gonna do the awkward. <laughs> this isn't a Key and Peele skit. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Should I grab your head now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, look at me. Give me an opinion. <laughs> All right. A three is played. That's not a bad idea when you're trying to trade off a weak isolated pawn for a healthy Peshka. But uh, if the tactical tension goes away, Black is. Positionally doing just fine. That C4 pawn's weak. In fact, maybe he'll go after it right away. Yeah, and it's, we keep talking about it. If you trade the Fian Keto Bishop, there will be vulnerable squares in your king's side. Mm. Right? So if you, you know you take on B7 I take with my queen, you're already looking at some kind of threats with knight F3 check if I can remove your knight away from the D4 square. Yeah, and how do you just... you you got to deal with this now, right? Yeah. Can you... And when, at what point do you take on B4? Or do you allow black to take on A3? I, I just don't even know how to deal with this right now. <laughs> He's going to take and then c5, I assume, but knight c4 comes anyway, so I really like what's happening here. Grishuk getting the... Wait, that... Oh, it doesn't blunder a piece. I think he wait, thought he could take with the pawn, wait, though. Why couldn't he take on b2? Like, knight takes b2. Okay. Knight takes b7, knight takes d1. And then win b4? Yeah. He's winning the pawn anyway, though. Oh, but there's some knight c6 stuff that's looking kind of annoying. Yeah, in the main game, he's winning that pawn, right? In the main game. Wait, knight c6. Wait. Oh, knight c6, queen b7. Knight takes e 7 check. You take back bishop a3, and then you have queen c7. c7 or d8. Rook c5. Just move the queen anyway, yeah. Okay. Grishuk has stolen a pawn. Will he be punished? Find out in just a few moments. <laughs> when we return. Actually, we'll be here. So We will be here. But when we're, we're all going to find out in literally chess. just a few moments. Yeah. 48 seconds for Artemiev and uh, Queen A1. Okay, you got the battery. Hoping for Knight C6 next. That's your goal. And uh, probably I need to bring the Queen back to B7 anyway. Guard A7, Guard C6. What you thinking? That was very reasonable. He played okay. it. Now Knight E4 to G5 kind of ideas are scary. Yeah, I love that. Knight A3 would be mate. Yep, knight, in knight e4 to d2. Like, bug house, doubles. Knight mates, knight mates. <laughs> knight mates. Like, you're being a bad teammate. Give me the knight. What? You're always yelling at me. Look at my position for once. See the pieces I need. <laughs> Stay ahead in the clock. I, uh, that's a, that's a good uh, bug house inside. <laughs> inside joke. All right, queen to g4, queen h3, knight g4. It's a lot of moves in a row. Maybe rook f to c8 here. There it is. Just keeping the knight out of c6. I mean, black yeah. is up a pawn. Mm -hmm. You could play bishop c5 at some moment if you want to kind of chase that knight. Oh. Hmm. What if I just take that thing? Oh, because I can't put my second rook on c8 like I was about to blunder. So, don't listen to me. I was like, what if I trade and play rook c8? But I can't do that because there's a queen on a6. Doesn't work. h5. Just go for it. H5, H4, H3? Yeah, hold nothing back. It's the last game of the year. Last game of the year. Not yet, but kind of. Diamond member Real Greco wants us to make that doubles team happen. Bughouse team Wrench and Hess. Oh, it's happening. Don't you worry. Doesn't even know it's happening right now. It's happening right now because time is not linear. It's liquid in a straw. Quantum physics, figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. H5. You're up a pawn if you're black. But queen H5 is good because it also frees the back rank. Queen takes A7 as a threat. Yep. You just took the words right out of my mouth. Literally. Well, grabbed them. Yeah, like you did. Uh, Cause, Ursula. Cause we're so Ariel, cool. I was like, give me your voice. That was weird. Little Mermaid's been on the brain lately. Watched it recently. Are you, uh, you want to be under the sea? Mm hmm. Rook D1. Rook H1. Yeah, that's, that's gonna a be problem. Mean. Queen F3, working it. Here oh, comes knight E4. No diggity. Yep, H4. It's all good. 
It's all good in the hood for black. H4 looks delicioso, Dora. So is 94, actually. He's running 96 F2. Ah, both good. Whoa, what? Sasha? He's, uh, wants a little bit of ga a game of chickle, I guess. Bring it right back and... But then you lose E5 now that you've given me a free... Yeah, what is he doing? Sometimes Gershu gets a little oh, too he has fancy no time, in his time scrambles. I know, but he had more time than his opponent. I mean, whoa, a moment before. Knight takes F2. Ooh, oh, that's good. Knight G5 was... Oh, Knight G5 is still coming, though. The rook has to move. Knight G5. Knight D2. G5 traps the rook out. Knight D2. Yeah, but look how sick that is. Wow, just take that. And then rook D3. It's only a five seconds, four seconds, two seconds. Rookie eight. Rookie eight was good, and he missed it. He's settling on the draw. Grishuk has how many games has he let get away already? A ton. A ton. Rookie eight. Play for the win. A4. No, it's not quick enough. Doesn't have enough time. The rook comes to H1. Just in time. You can yell A4 like that any time, though. <laughs> you don't have to ask permission. <laughs> I don't need to ask you for anything. So exciting. Chris just shakes his head. He should shake his head. Yeah. Again, two games were like a move away from winning, and at that point you could just see he just he got too fancy. If we bring up the analysis board, I mean it was uh Black's um Black's game to win for sure. I mean, it may still be good here. I mean, I was calling for rookie eight after the E file opened. Keep the pressure, but Queen B three check, I guess. Okay, so but for sure, back here, Robert, you called for it. I mean, with the queen on f3, knight e4 threatened knight takes f2 and then rook d1 winning. Yep. And h4 was also just very strong. I think he just missed this, though. He didn't, I think, didn't have I, much I don't time. think he saw this. Yeah. The whole point, everyone, is, okay, you're threatening a million things, and if takes, rook d1 is resigns. So, um, wow. Back to the live game, but... Uh, Again, it's a, it's a one-game lead right now for Artemiev, and there's no way you can't feel that Grishuk is uh, something's a little amiss. Here. Yeah, he just said that knockout punch. You know, yeah. He's just not having it right now. Yep. But he's been very solid. He's in many advantageous positions. And here we see he's the two bishops. He's claiming that's an advantage. And the thing is, there's not much space for either side right now. Black is rock solid. Look at the b7 to d5 to f7 to h5. Like All these light square pawns. And only one side has a light square bishop, and that's white. But with all the pawns on the light squares, that bishop's not doing too much. Yeah, limited. Yeah. And so it's going to be a very intense positional battle from here on out. God, you just, like, set the tone for something that sounds so epic. <laughs> just, you know, trying to get back to the yep. chest like you told me. Trying to be serious. Being super yep. serial. I'm, I'm going to take that, Daryl. I'll take that. I'll take that GM norm from the Rockets. Um all right, Rook D1 played. You highlighted the fact that there's tension in the position and that Black has control of the light squares with the pawns, but we know that positionally E4 is a goal for White often. In fact, Rook D1 might prepare Knight C5 and E4 to follow. Yep. In fact, me likey. Yeah, playing for put, E4 makes Put that Knight on C5. I don't know what he's waiting for. Sarah Michelle Geller <laughs> slash Jennifer Love Hewitt. What are you waiting for? Come on, Benson. Sorry. Ben's son. Uh -huh. So, it, yeah. It's just, no one cares about the, those details from a horror movie. They yes, care they when do. the main female star yells in the road, what are you waiting for? Why do you, I mean. <laughs> sorry, I don't even know why I'm getting mad at you. I'm glad we're off camera. I know, I, f I feel this, like, inner anger. No, we're doing fine. No, we're not. Well, I'm over you. So, anyway, we're going <laughs> to. I mean, you're right, though. Boy has to play for E4 ideas. Yep. Or not. But he might put his bishop on F1 in some moment. So I actually really think knight C5 was better earlier than what he did. Yeah. I think that made a lot of sense. There was Unless there was some sort of tactic on D4 to undermine the knight. Okay. All right. Back back to the present position where white does have an advantage in space, but uh, black holding solidly all the squares that matter. And now Whoa. C5. Here we go. Here we go. So that makes that bishop on G2 much more alive. Which is my main concern of playing a move like C5. Yeah. Because what if I take on D5? Well, the problem is Knight guards C8 right away. So yeah, I was just going to move my queen back to B1. Oh, really? I was hoping that my bishop would break free. Yeah, actually, that's uh, not a bad point. Because even here, the bishop pair opening the position looks good. So, which means you probably won't take on E3. Mm -hmm. You'll probably 
Yeah, and this lion's gonna play. Oh, he goes for it. E five, I think. So right now E five says the bishop on G two, not getting open. Although the bishop can go to F one at, at the right time. Shout out to Chris there for the bits. We appreciate it. All the love. Been a long day. We love your love. Why not E five? I am with you. Ooh, wow. But now take it. Yeah, you gotta take it or you leave it. Really, you take it. You're only two or options. Leave it. You take it or leave it. Now you take it. What do you th I think this is getting much better for Sasha. I mean, the bishop pair obviously has an advantage as the position becomes open, but uh, what are you thinking here? The, if I can take on d5, a very happy bishop. Yeah, I don't know why he's spending so much time. Unless there's something with takes and bishop f4. I was sitting here wondering, what is he doing? He wants to open the d file, maybe? Hit the bishop? Uh, takes e5, bishop takes, and then bishop f4. So how important is this move? Okay, I was wondering if he might play knight f4 to take on d5. So you're saying the pawn's hanging anyway. That's the point. And I want to get my knight there and you know threaten knight e7 check and things. Look at the time again, right? Yeah, but the position looks really good for Grishuk, and now he's up ten seconds as well. I like it. Yeah, this looks good. I mean, you take on e3, I take my bishop. Now the d file is open for my rook. If you play this, I think e takes d. D4 now. Yeah. He's going to put a knight on E4. So instead he says no to that. But we get the exact type of structure we were talking about. Queen takes G6. Being open. Is Ooh, it was a threat. Could he have played it? I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's show it real quick. Instead of taking here, there was this possible sacrifice on G6. But after takes D2, everything's guarded by the knight. So nothing to it. So instead, Sasha settles on the... Uh, Simple approach. I mean, this is so Although good. G6 is still under under the gaze of the queen. Not quite, because she's defending, but keep an eye on it. And queen E4 is a threat, too. Hitting B7, hitting the knight on D4. So black has to be very careful with that. In my, well, queen E4 now? Mm. Mm. Yeah, this looks mm. extremely Displays good. Displays knights. Lead to tactics. Tactics. And you can't really move your knight. Uh, I guess you can move it there, but take on b7. You can still take on b7. The qu the knight takes a four check is a bit annoying. Oh my gosh, maybe king h2 there. So he's just going to try to keep the bishop. But uh oh. The pin. The pin is real. Rook d2. Well, you got to watch out because you move a knight. There's still bishop takes f7 check ideas. Oh, whoa. 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 Is this good? No idea. You can take F7 and then... No. Oh, no, you can't. Takes B7? That, looked, that was a good decision. Okay. Krishuk has got to convert on this one. Too many games that have gotten away in the time scramble. He's definitely winning here. Up a pawn with the bishop pair in the end game. Let's move that bishop back. To E4 or F3. The knight is pinned. Yep. Wow. F5. I like the way he plays these time scramble positions. He really puts pressure on Grishuk to yeah. find all the right moves. But this, is, I think, was a good decision to take on d4. Look at that. Rook c7, yeah. huge Yeah, Rook threat. c6 is coming, and g6 is a problem. Queen c7? Well, wow. That caught me off guard. Yeah. I don't know why the queen trade was the end of the world for black there. Yeah, that looked reasonable. I think queen. the pawn on g6, as you highlighted, being Yeah, uh, I mean, but still, vulnerable. you think with the queen's off the board, you have better drawing chances. Yeah, because now you're up three pawns. Queen yeah. f4, queen g5. a5, here you go. Let's go. Push him, baby. There it goes. Queen g5. Play h5 next. b4. Push him, baby. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Queen takes g6, queen takes f5. Shook, uh cleans this one up, looking like it. How many pawns he up? Enough is the answer. <laughs> Bishop e4 would have led to a little mate on h7. Queen c8 check picked up the bishop. Ah, uh, that's what he missed. But he found it now. Yeah. I missed it for a second, too. And uh, it's actually almost mate unless you give up the bishop with check. Because of king h7, there's bishop e4. So, yep. okay. Very, very nice win right there from Alexander Grishuk. And we have a tied match with about 27 minutes remaining here, everyone, uh, in the uh, total game clock. So uh, don't go anywhere. If you're if you're just getting here, you're in for the treat that we promised you. A very, very close match between these two Russians. I picked Grishuk as the slight favorite. Robert picked Artemyev. 
we both agreed to, uh, yo, grab a, you want to grab a cold one after this and uh, talk it over. You did right? call me beer shorts, apparently. I did call you beer shorts. All right, over here. Um, and uh, thanks for being here, regardless of where you are. If you want to, are one of the 7,925 who've been here all day, because we've been live for Many. six and a half hours. Oh, it's been that long. You're right. You're awesome. Thanks for being here. Speaking of awesome, what do you think about this position? Nothing's really awesome in it. Everything is awesome. It's a good song. Um, Grandmaster to be is awesome, playing Guess the Move over there. Rocking it. Let's see. So the a pawn on A5 is a good pawn for white. Mm-hmm. Holding back B7. Exactly. But black can still consider playing B6 at the right moment. You go rook FB8, pawn to B6, and try to open up the B file and aim at the pawn on B2. Mm -hmm. I actually don't think white has gotten that much of the opening. Yeah, I agree. Everything is well defended for black. Trading off the bishops might Look, give you access. B6 access. is possible even without rook FB8, honestly. I just I mean, want to time it so that if you capture me, I just immediately have a yeah, lot of Yeah, you immediately in. have battery threats. I dig it. That's why you're a grandmaster. And I'm not. Pretty sure that's not the reason why I'm a grandmaster. <laughs> <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't cry. Look at those dancing heads. <laughs> that's a close match. Yep. Back and forth and back and forth. Playing a little, little tennis, mm -hmm. volleying over here. Yep. Will two heads become one by the end of the match? Find out. <laughs> okay, rook fb8 is met by knight fd2, which is why it wasn't a threat, everyone. Knight um, takes d4 is a threat here. It is, because the queen is undefended, and the pawn on c3 is pinned. Um, queen to d2 takes care of all that, though. Or rook a4. I like that move. Yeah. You're going to bring the knight and double rooks quickly to hit a6. That's the goal. But black can consider playing a5 at some moment, uh, if necessary. But the pawn a6 is defended for the time being. The rook and the queen are just going to stay put. But what's black's plan? Right? When we look at a position like this, we have mm -hmm. to think about plans. Because if black does nothing, and white can just white play does knight, the plan we talked about. knight d3, rook, you want me to pawn to b4, put mm -hmm. your knight on c5, just gaining space, and it's very uh, difficult for black. To so you're highlighting because black needs a concrete plan here, to be fair, because he has more positional weaknesses than white. you got to do something here. Yeah. Change the dead. Change the direction. So he brings the knight into c4. And, okay, b2. But white gets what, we, what he wants. Yeah, b4 at some moment. And b3 maybe... and b4. Kick the knight, play b4 with tempo, and then put a knight on c5. Oh, b4 here. b4, knight on c5. In fact, because this knight, while you would think you're giving up a permanent outpost square, everyone, you can kind of get away with this, because this knight is much more likely to be traded by the move knight to d2. Um, and this knight coming to c5 either helps win a6 or forces you to capture and give me a protected passer. And yes, that rhymed. Rook a2, ooh, a5, I think he should have played b4. But b4 is still possible. Okay, he goes knight d2 anyway. He's saying that this a pawn is going to be pinned, right? It's going to be a target, it's going to be pinned. And this goes to show why knights instead of bishops can be so good. Because this bishop on d6 can never contest for light squares. Whereas you're like, oh, there's a knight on c4, I want to kick it out. Let me bring my knight back there to do so. Yeah, I like it. And positionally, white holds a lot of the cards here because as the knight gets traded, a5, okay, yes, the b file has some pressure, but a5 is the only real weakness here, the only isolated pawn. And uh, that's kind of key as we're evaluating the future of the position. So Artemiev in a good spot right now to regain his lead. Yeah, and also I'm, up almost a minute on the clock, by the way. I'm wondering when he's going to play b4. And just really ask Black how uh, he just plans to defend the queen side. Maybe no. Why not? <laughs> hey, guys, I want the A5. I mean, the A5 pawn's also hanging, right? So if I take on hey. C4, there it is, B4. I like it. That's why I said, why not now? Yeah, that looks like a problem. It I looks good. I don't know how you defend it. Like Bishop C7 is not a fun move to play. Then you just allow the knight into C5. You're throwing a take on c4, remove the guard of the and pawn. Just win a5, the a pawn and straight win. up. Exactly. Very difficult for black. Only 30 seconds. Can you take a5 intermezzo? I wonder if he could have right there. Yeah, interesting question. He didn't do it, clearly. I, I tell me if, you know, he's up a minute, he's still better. He's just The a pawn's pinned anyway, right? It's yeah. not going anywhere. 
for a while. Um, knight c5. But, but I wonder if he missed his chance. He played that move very quickly. Yeah, Let's back up to the analysis board and actually see whether that was possible. Because in this position after the trade, rook takes a5 was an inner mezzo. 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 And I think then you win here. I mean, what's what's the move that I'm missing? I'm not seeing a move that you're right? missing. I, th I think that was that was a mistake, actually. I mean, from a... If, if it ends up being uh, a position that Grishuk ultimately holds... We we will definitely come back to that moment as a big one. Um, so he's defending it, and you still can't capture him before because the pawn is pinned. Yeah, but what's White's next move right now? They're both under time pressure. I think Artemiev might have let this one slip. Maybe a King bit. F1. Okay, Knight C5 wasn't sure about because of Bishop B6. But I'm never gonna take it and give you two pass pawns, right? Take on B4. Oh, I though. can take B4. Yeah, I was saying you're never gonna take the knight. But his end game is still not so comfortable, right? Because yeah, white the, the has the most pawn outside is... pawn. Mm -hmm. So there's king. Can we win the king in? King e2. King d3. But yeah, you're right. Grishuk is yeah. king in the center. King can go to even b5. c6 and b5. What you need is white is to be able to attack a second weakness. So go rook a2 to f3 or something uh -huh. like that. But it's too slow. Yeah, very, very slow. Rooks from A2 can't go to F3. Thank you for the lesson. No matter how hard you try, Robert. Sad. They can't do it. Can you take on C5 there? Hmm, I wonder if he could have taken on C5 instead of on A5. Been winning in the king upon ending? There wasn't going to be a... Uh... Oh, could have been. Yeah. Hmm. To the back cave. <sighs> to the back cave. What could have no, happened there? No, there wasn't going to be a king upon ending. Because if you go like to the beginning of it, oh, it's going to be a rook and pawn ending. Yeah. Yeah. They the next game will get going, but we'll uh, we'll continue to to figure this thing out here on the analysis board. Um, right back here. Like here. Yeah. So bishop takes even right five. away, right? Yeah. That's what I was. Thinking. I was imagining everything coming off, and if the rooks were off the board here, even this might almost be winning for black. But with the two rooks on the board. Yeah, king b five doesn't have rook b four check, so I can't. Yeah, it's probably still a draw, but definitely something black to consider, because you could play the position, right? Play e5, two big pawns. That's anyway. kind of what I was thinking. But... Would have been interesting. All right, it didn't happen. We are back to the live position <laughs> here as the next game in the three-minute segment rolls on. Only 18 minutes remain. Time flies when you're having fun. The three-minute portion, we remain deadlocked at six and a half games apiece. And we got another weird opening by Artemiev here. He played b5 on the first move in this one. So he's not afraid to I mix like it, it up. And Grishuk is probably like, I need to punish this guy. As far as games or, let's say, matches we're comparing, right? In the Aronian Ali Reza match, we had a, a massive lead for the Armenian, 7-2 to two after five minutes. Neither player in this match has ever had a two-game lead. Yep. We have had a one-game lead at most for either player, and both players have led by one point at some point. So um, this, is, this is the definition of a back-and-forth coin flip match. So we hope you stay with us all the way to the end because it's going to be, I think it's going to be exciting. I'm I'm still totally up in the air whether whether which player is better at bullet. So yeah, and we just saw that um, ticker across the screen saying that Grishuk is four and a half out of six in his six white games thus far. Mm -hmm. That's a very good sign for him, uh, but that also means that Artemiev is also crushing with the white pieces. Yep. So, you know, got to figure that out for both sides. You know, in typical where. White has a better score. You move first. You kind of dictate the action. But then you just, just show up their positions. And right now here are the white pieces in this game, I think we both agree that with this pawn on a6 and zero weaknesses to speak of for white, that we, we must like Sasha's position. You have to, yeah. right? It's uh, Everything is equal except the structure. This is kind of the structure we had last game except colors reversed, right? Yeah. Uh, Artemia was unable to convert. By the way, I think he just, that rook takes a5. We were right about that. I think he just missed that. Yeah. Just a win. Yeah, okay. Again, there's been a, been a couple of uh, missed opportunities, it seems. Either that or we're seeing things, which wouldn't be surprised <laughs> to hear that either afterwards. Knight b6. That's a good transition if the knight trades. Let's analyze that for white. That's why you don't want to take, because you kind of fix your opponent's structure. No longer have just the isolated pawn there. It has a buddy. Buddy system. 
so instead you play queen d1 to make sure that there is no buddy system for the a-pawn. Now the question is, do you care exactly? I was oh, saying, do I you, love that move. Do you play bishop f1 first? You just not care about the bishop because after knight d3, queen d3, now it's Well, not only that, no, you take your first with tempo, and then at the end of the line, e7 falls. Ah, that right? looks pretty interesting. I guess you can take on b2 instead of going queen c. Like, there's a lot of... Hang... And he's just going to win. Oh my gosh, this is just yeah. straight up killer. Grishuk is up a pawn, with has the, the bishop here. Yeah, this is... He's, he's up the pawn and the compensation, as they say. And, uh, and the time. Well, you are the best chatter, Simo1. If we're the best commentators, you're the best chatter. Called it no samesies. <laughs> no samesies? Is that an expression? No samesies. My kids still say that, I think. Oh, that's kind of adorable. I thought you said it, in which case it's make fun of you, but now I know it's from them. It's adorable. Yeah. It might have been from me. <laughs> so, well, okay, let's see how white really makes progress. Opposite color bishops, which means that in certain end games, it's going to be hard to press forward. But in games with queens on the board, an attack can happen. For mm. example, if you have bishop d3, pawn now d5. Now you're talking dirty on those light squares. Exactly. And then you might, will not be able to stop it. So that's the that's the trade-off. Is end games often give pretty good chances to hold. More middle games or earlier stages, attack. So 95 now, giving up the b2 pawn is something that's certainly worth Gotta consideration. Gotta be considered, right? Probably queen c2, though. Just keep that pawn on the but board. But look at this. To the back cave. Knight a5, rook b2, knight c6. Your only move is queen e8, because queen c8 allows a fork emote. So the queen goes to e8, and you're going to tell me this isn't... I mean, this is... I, I just like keeping my extra pawns. You know I like sacrificing pieces, right? And rook a7? Look how good this would have been. He didn't go for it. He played your move, queen c2, lame sauce. <laughs> c5, knight a5. He's still better, don't, but I'm just don't saying. Don't hate the player, hate the game. What about D5? Diamond member MB Chess Master in the Chess TV chat says, Who are you rooting for in the match, Danny or Robert? <laughs> I'm not rooting for anybody. I don't root for people. Stop it. I don't. So Stop it. He went D5, which I just had suggested. The knight's coming to C6. If black plays knight E5, it's going to be hard to dislodge that knight because you don't actually want to play F4. That really opens up your king. Yeah, um, I mean, but you do if you can kick the knight out, right? Yeah. So maybe you'll do And yeah. then knight c6. I guess you're there in time to do it. Knight c6 is looking pretty good. The thing is, you're right, though. Because f4 is a move that sometimes you want back with the open king, it gives black the opportunity to consider exchange sacks now, right? Like g takes f4 g right here. g takes f4. And I, I am starting to think maybe we shouldn't have played f4. We as in, as if I have any say Rook e7? So. Yeah, is there, was the queen getting trapped? Rook e7, rook a6? No, there's queen b2. But hmm. it's crazy, right? I think uh, Grushuk is taking his time because he wants to make sure he doesn't miss something better. He goes for this, but Knight why? Knight takes b8, and then if Rook takes queen f5, so he has to go the queen on b8 and Rook a7. Oh, okay. the d5's hanging. But and actually, yeah, you but might queen want f5 is still good. You might want to lose that d5 pawn. Yeah, because it opens up more lines for both the rooks and the bishops. Look at that. So also, look arrows. at my drawing. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's I cool. like it. Um, I think Rook 1 to a7. Or A to A7, rather. I like it. Hey, he's getting passive on me. I don't care about that D-pawn. Yeah, you're right. I like this move. Because if knight D5, you could gain a tempo, put the bishop on C4. Yep. I think you were right. I think that was a little bit better. But Gershuk, without a ton of time, is a little nervous about parting ways with the D-pawn. But now it's like... Uh, uh, white's still better. I think you can put the bishop on B5, which holds E8. Oh, I honestly forgot that... Black doesn't have a pawn with the exchange, even pawns. Yeah, that's, that's right, pawn. because he was down a pawn. Yeah. That, that's uh, something I forgot, too. Totally true. Which is why I kind of was had the inclination that, oh, black should be okay, or right. like, not but so you bad. Look at it, and rook comes to f2. f7 is on the uh, agenda. Okay, g3 gives that bishop. Ooh, rook f2, you invited that. Yeah. Rook takes e5. Oh, take that. Queen f7, bishop d3. Give it to me. Game over. Give it to me. Give it to me. Oh, I didn't realize just that. Play moves D6, off. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Even the queens off the board still should push be that enough. to D7. Bishop C4 now. Bishop C4 first, and then D7. Muy bueno. -y. Rook A4, and then Bishop E6. That would have been funny. Don't play D7 right H4. away. H4. Just take C5. Patience. Oh, yeah, I said H4. The king was on H2. I thought it was a pawn on H2. Oh. In my head, I was like, H4 looks good to kick the bishop. It's out. been a long day for Robert. It's uh. Oh, for me. <laughs> for both of us. <laughs> I'm kidding. 
Bishop d5 first, right? Yep, and then c4. Yeah. So. Um. Uh. Uh oh. I don't approve of this conversion. Black's gonna have a blockade on the dark squares now. Oh no. I think that was a huge blunder. Why would he do that? I don't get it. Um. I think that was a huge blunder. I think winning that game against Dominguez Perez from the World Cup gave him false expectations. King c7. It's just a draw. It was a horrible decision. What? Why did he do that? Are these guys trying to keep this match close? Bishop f4 comes and... There's no win. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. For those of you who don't know the game I'm referring to, analyzed it for a YouTube video. Um, Alexander Grishuk swindled Lanier Dominguez Perez at the uh, World Cup in Conti Monsisk about two weeks ago and won an obstacle bishop ending that should have been a draw. And I have a feeling that he uh, got a little careless here because absolutely nothing to it. He offers a draw and uh, wow. He's just, he's got to be so So many games have gotten away from him in this match. If you're just joining us, this is just, it's been uh I don't want to use the word poor. These guys are incredibly strong grandmasters playing amazing chess, and we're, we're honored to commentate on it. But it's been, it's been a surprisingly subpar conversion of advantages for Kershuk today. I mean, Rook takes e5 was a good decision, right? He sacrificed the exchange back. We talk about this often. When you're yep. ahead in material, oftentimes you may want to sacrifice some yep. uh, to make this situation easier for yourself. Oops, wrong click. Yeah, um, yeah we'll go back to here. Oh, okay, well, first we'll go here and say that bishop d5 for sure the way to play for a win. Yeah, you're threatening rook takes g5 to remove the guard of the... Which it gets a queen. Two. If you go so. bishop f6, you go c4. Because the and rook's the not point is the, the bishop can't move without the queen. You're just winning now. The rook is cut off. You've got the rooks on the board. You'll play rook e8 and queen. Yeah. Like, this is not us hallucinating. Rook takes d5, a completely unnecessary... Sorry, rook to d5, a completely horrible blunder. Bishop to d5 would have been winning. Yep. So that was the first and maybe last big blunder. But Robert's highlighting that in this position, Grishuk made the right call to give back the exchange and go for the attack. Maybe we got a little careless to say that the end game was easily winning. Like honestly, the more now that I look at it, no, I think what he did was great. I think. I mean, you could try to keep the attack going, but okay, let's go with what you what you're saying. You're right. Okay, so we uh, we get the position with the queen trade on f7, and. Um, should have just been an easily winning endgame. He just he stole a second pawn. It was just right, just just bishop d5, and the game's over. Yep. And maybe he just missed. Maybe he just missed that like bishop f6 doesn't threaten anything. That it might have been just a, a quick hallucination. Yeah, he didn't have too much time left, right? Yeah, I mean it's totally fair. Uh, but uh, wow, I mean this is a tied match, but in some ways due to missed opportunities, as much as it has been to to stellar defense. So. And I see Wesley So in the chat. Classic Wesley the hanging out on chess.com. After he won his match yesterday against Shakur Armamadjarov, he said, hey, tomorrow I'm going to watch uh, the Speed yeah. Chess Championship matches. He said, you guys are doing a good job. And look, there's a Diamond member named Sofan. You are my idol. <laughs> That's actually true. I got but wait, <laughs> Wesley reported him. <laughs> I got reported him. Wesley, Wesley reported a stalker. <laughs> Diamond member Sofan. <laughs> Even if you're a fan, doesn't let you, you know, you can't cross lines. So if Wesley reported you, he might have had a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> Wesley just says, one thing I love about chess.com is the unlimited amount of people you can block. <laughs> Unlike Facebook. <laughs> Unlike Facebook. <laughs> Take that, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> this is real stuff. Wesley So, block super fan, who's a Diamond member. Thank you for your support. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's talk about the game here. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> the uh, the chess.com chat is lit right now with Wesley So hanging out and, and a super fan. Um well, the, whether uh, you're whether you're from Twitch or Chess TV or Chess.com, thanks for being here either way. So. If you look at this position, though, double C pawns yep. don't really inspire much confidence in the pawn structure, and now double isolated C pawns. And what you're getting in return is the open D file. Your queen's already on D3, so rook F to D1 is possible. But at some point, black is going to remove this bishop and aim at these double C pawns. So right now, king H8. Um, knight G5 is coming. It's actually pretty annoying. I like this plan. Queen E7... Knight a5, bishop f7. Ooh, knight g5 comes a little yeah. too soon. But still, queen e7, knight a5. I like black. I like what you highlighted but about I think the it's, positional. It could be a bit slow because if you play queen e7, I have ideas of queen e6 and things like that. Uh, knight e6 is also possible because your knight c6 is hanging in many variations. Um, so 
it seems like white might just be in time here. Queen e6 looks like the right move, I guess. Or queen d6, I can't decide. Both look good. How do I choose? I don't know. They both look good. Shout out to Diamond member Virtwitch, who also hangs out on Twitch, but he's a Diamond member on chess.com, and he just one guessed the move, and he's not even 1800. Well played. Or something. I don't even know what he's talking about there. But thanks for being here, Virtual. <laughs> um, all right. 96, there it is. The problem is, can I Bishop F7 me? pin you and win you, right? Give you up C6 for, for E6. I kind of like it. The thing is, I can put my bishop on D5. So my pawn on C4 is not that weak if my bishop can sit on D5. But the issue with my bishop going to D5 is at some point F4 is going to be a big problem. Yeah, maybe even right away with well, craziness. They, yeah. You don't want to give the bishop on e6, though. Yeah, I was thinking the dark squares might get nasty, but you're right. Why rush it? Bishop c8 first. You yeah. can't even attack my rook. No yeah. no squares, and here comes f4. Ooh, bishop g5. What a move. Look Overwhel at Artemia. Overwhelming the queen to hit e6. Depending on the length of this game, uh, I guess it's hard to say this will be the last one. Very likely we're going to have one more three-minute game after this before bullet commences, so... Stick around, but uh, we only have five minutes and twenty seconds right now on the on the total clock. I feel like we've just had very few games because they're this match does feel like we've just had another match before it. Yeah, <laughs> feels that way, but it also feels like the games have been long. You're right. Ooh, but this is looking good for Artemiev because you go rook c8, you go bishop d7, and say, let's trade on the seventh rank, get my rook to that square. But I'm also Still looking at those doubled C pawns. You're just really a double C pawn hater. I'm a doubled C pawn girl, and this is a doubled C pawn world. They, you seem like anti double C pawn. Bishop d6 wins an exchange. What? Bishop d6? Bishop d6 won the exchange. Yeah. You missed it. To the back cave. Bishop d6 trapped the rook, and if you take me, I take you. Pokemon. These guys are missing moves all over the board right now. Maybe they're as tired as we are. That wasn't good, because now I'm starting to agree with you about Black's position, right? This yeah, double, double C pawns, C pawns are... and both look at both bishops. They're both staring down at the pawns. Mm -hmm. Okay, time to time to look to take some. The problem for Black is as ugly as those pawns are. You really, I mean, White is in control because he owns the D file. Right. So there's not anymore. Huh? Rook D8 or Bishop F6 first, perhaps. No, because Rook D8 uh, threatens to take and win C3. That's true. But I thought bishop g5, maybe I can give up the uh, pawn. Because I have rook d6. We're going to find out because he's going he's gonna to call the bluff. Or is he? If h6, bishop d2, rook d8 with the pin. Oh. Yeah, yeah he's definitely not going to get all passive and uh, protect the c3 pawn. He's going to go rook d6 and continue uh, infiltrating on the d file. So rook d6 now. Uh, I wonder if he should have gone for it. I wonder if Krishuk had his chance. 20 seconds to 10 seconds going to be another scramble. Only three minutes left in the middle portion here. I like it. Ooh, E3? No? Yep. Okay, yes. I like E3 a lot. Take enough two. Yeah, me like it. Now, if you can get the rooks off the board, you're in great shape. The king has to take because C3 was falling, everybody. Yep. So, rook F6? No. No, then just rook D8, rook F8. Oh, he goes for it, but that just might be a draw offer. Okay. Seems wise. I was calling this, but I thought he would try to play for a win. Ugh. But there's nowhere really for black to go, so I think... Yeah, th okay. The bishops oh, are very white wants more. Whoa! I just leaned in expecting to say, and as we move to the final game of the three-minute portion, and it uh, turns out I was wrong. Mm -hmm. But now you might regret that. Yeah, you might play to lose this He's game. He's down on time, and Grishuk just got the coordination he was looking for with the two bishops focused on their rightful diagonals. Taking their place as king, Jon Snow. Here we go. Okay, what? Artemis is playing to win. It seems odd to me. because It shouldn't like... be, because he. I don't think he's any better. I agree. Now rook f6. Oh, yep. bishop e8 check is a threat, though. So if h5, there's bishop e8. Watch out for that. That actually would be pretty nasty. But uh, h5 now? I guess h5 isn't... h5. Bishop e6. Get your... Oh, gosh. He's, he's coordinating. Here comes h5. Here comes h5. Here comes the pressure. h5 him. This is going to be a game that Archimedes regrets. He had his he had his perpetual. King h4. Oh, can't go king h4. <laughs> king h4. King h4. Why not? <laughs> oh, man. You ever try to do that on chess.com and that you can't... Oh, it's illegal. You ever try to do that? No. I do it all the time. Oh, he hung a pawn. Down goes one pawn. Uh, here we go. Just take with the bishop. Bring the bishop in. G4. G4 was winning. He missed it. Well, actually, rook takes h3 was a free pawn. Yeah. The g4, the pawn was pinned, too. So 
but they're under time pressure. Hard to judge right now. Yeah. Two seconds, three seconds. King G6. Or King G7. Uh, uh, good enough. Bring the rook into D3. Use the G pawn. So you're going to G3 him? Use the G3 is... Um, rook D3. I don't know where that came yeah, from. I was... <laughs> Put the king in. The bishop will go to D5. Sit there for a bit. No, but black is winning. Winning? That sounds strong. Well, I, I don't understand. H5. Push that pawn. Uh, King f4, I guess, but then bishop e6. e6. Bishop e6, but then here goes rook d2. Uh, He's just going to settle. The most fancy, peaceful result we've ever seen. <laughs> he takes a second to try to think about it, and ultimately... Couldn't he go <sighs> king g5 there? Definitely didn't need to settle. Like, back when the rook's on d2 and the king's on well, g1. E even there, even there. Even with the... Yeah. No, I don't know give him my g3 pawn. Oh, yeah. What was around king g5? Oh, yeah, there's no takes in h7 because the rook comes to h2. Probably, I mean, they had no time. You know, it's hard to really blame you them. You didn't see that, yeah. But no, that looks like it was... Uh, and bishop h3 is also a deadly threat. Rook g8 might just be a big trade, though. So. Hmm. Right. Yeah, but I'm up a pawn. Now I have rook a2. I'm up a pawn in the endgame. Then maybe up two pawns at the end of that. Yeah, no, you were right. But it hasn't been a day of uh, converting on small advantages. Um, what it has been is uh, one of, well, I mean, honestly, both players get a lot of credit for being resourceful, right? <laughs> Creating tricks, pitfalls, but uh, it's just, it's been interesting, right? Both players getting under time pressure. There's been a lot of, uh, a lot of swindles, a lot of weirdness. Yep. So. Um, but Grishuk keeps doing the same thing, and I, I guess Artemiev is welcoming it. I think when Grishuk's at the white pieces, he's had the two bishops like every single time. Seriously, he yeah. has had the bishop pair all day, for for sure. Time is officially up here in our three plus one minute segment, which means after this we will have bullet, so don't go anywhere. We may have a tied match heading into the fastest segment, which always keeps us on the edge of our seat, and uh, Wesley So hanging out in the chess.com chat calling for moves, had G4 now. That was He's a good move. Happy Grishuk played it. And uh, it's a party going on. It's a chess party today. Ain't no party. Like a chess.com party, because the chess.com party don't stop. D5 is going to be hanging soon. <laughs> what are you looking at me for? I don't know. I was hoping for like, hoping you would be my my Dwight, to my <laughs> Michael Scott right there. See that? Why do I got to be Dwight? You can be Michael Scott. No, it's too late. A4 is always a really good move. And yeah, with the, knight on B6. the knights on B6 are never happy to see that pawn. Because now that you put the pawn A5, the yep. B5 square. I was going to say, I thought that even queen B3 would be a way to start poking at that. But okay, queen G4 also works. They're just very uh, strategic elements here. The B5 square, the knight can jump to, but that knight on B6 can't get to B4. Mm -hmm. And from B5, the knight can protect D4, attack D6, take away very important squares. F5 is coming in the near future for Grishuk. He's just going to push forward. This looks really unpleasant for black. Some people wondered if Artemius' camera was frozen, so I started paying attention, and I, I was a bit about to say, is he frozen? And then he, he did one of these very, very slight nods. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he's just uh, focused. He's very still. Yep. Doesn't want to waste physical energy on moving the body or breathing when he's playing chess. Okay, he's going for the uh, C3 pawn. I just want to. It's very, it's very uh, alpha zero ish, very Leela ish. The way Artemia plays chess, right? Doesn't, doesn't fall in love with the bishop pair. Loves his knights. Willing to kind of mix it up in the king safety realm. You know, what? actually, I, instead of queen f three, I thought he should have went rook to b one. And the point is that the c three pawn wasn't really hanging because bishop d two comes, taking on a five and pinning the knight on b six. Okay. So something like that looked pretty nice. Yeah. Black doesn't have to take c3. That's true. But, no, I agree. That's interesting. And you get that rook into the game. He wants the light squares, though. That's the thing. What you really need to do is put that bishop on from h3 to d3, and then black is toast. So F, uh, fg6, fg6, bishop f5 is a possibility. Like, right now. Wait a sec. He, might, he invited it, kind of. Wait, right now. Yeah, do it. F takes, f takes, bishop f5. Pawn is pinned. Threatening queen takes h5. Yep. And rook h4 runs right into bishop takes g6 check. The rook on c8 has been hanging as well, but I, I don't really <laughs> care about that. No one cares about the rook on c8. Like the last kid picked on the team right here. I mean, this 
is there any way for Black to stop this? After FG, FG, Bishop F5, like, is Black just getting toasted? Like, if we think about concretely, like, is there a single thing that Black can do there? No, it's... it's... I don't know. Rook A2, gonna swing over. No. Not happy about that. I, I mean... Like, if we analyze instead of rook a2, just F, like that exact line, right? Takes, takes, bishop f5. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with it? You would have had to take. Queen h5, g6. Right? There is rook h4 at the end. Oh! Nice but, find. But there's this. Yeah. I mean, no, you're, you're right. I, mean, I, I still think it was great for white. Um, and now rook h4 comes anyway. So, not really sure what's going on here. Uh, we've got both sides now with about a minute remaining on the clock. Critical moment, critical tension building up around the g6 trade. Yep. A4 has been hanging now because the rook moved away from the A2 square. Uh, but you have to still consider FG6 and bishop takes C8. So he's inviting this bishop takes C8. Change that. He doesn't care. No one likes the rook on C8, apparently. He's the true honey badger. Yeah. Take what he wants. Yeah, actually, I'm starting to like black's position more now. Just the control of the squares. They're giving us extra games here, everyone. Obviously, you can see the clock. That means the 3 plus 1 minute portion is officially over. But this game does count toward the score, so just as critical as every game before it. I know bishop e1, but then there's rook f4. Oh, wow. It's going to happen. Uh-oh. He missed it. Look at his face. He totally missed rook f4. He, he jumped. Yeah. His position is bad now. He's losing an exchange. Well, he can still win the other exchange. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> it's true. It's been sitting there forever. So knight queen e3, a, queen you can play queen three. d3 and if takes. Oh, but then e1 hangs at the end. Yeah. So he takes first and queen f3. But yeah, as but you said, e1 hangs in the end. Yeah. Grishuk I mean, has the just amount of games he's just thrown away amazing positions. Yeah. No, it's... Uh, and this game was particularly resourceful for Martemio. Yeah. He's had the better openings throughout the day. We've been openly critical of Artemiev's choice in the first stage. Um, but uh, converting has been has been a struggle here for Gershuk. So if you're just joining us, 7,500 of you don't go anywhere. Will Sasha find his uh, his top form in the bullet? We're going to find out here in just a few moments. Um, some questions coming in uh, in both. Diamond member Sloppy Aya wants to know who is better in bullet according to the stats. I actually don't know. Maybe we could bring up the smarter chess predictions as far as how we looked at it. Um, I don't remember. I think Gershuk was favored slightly. In bullet, I, I don't know if you right. remember. But uh, we'll find out. Obviously, the bullet is uh, coming up, and uh, and there we go. Yeah, Grishuk was favored by just one game in the 1 plus 1 segment. But he was also favored by one in this segment. And, and that's not going that way. No, it's going so, minus 2 for him. Yeah. Anyway, so interesting stuff, right? We'll see if, uh, if that storyline pays off, if he does ultimately find himself a... Ooh, Rook F4. Oh, Artemiev takes the lead. Not... A good series of games there to bring the three-minute to a close. For Grishuk, we will have a uh, very, very short break before we are ultimately going to come back for the fastest segment of the day. The doubleheader action here continues. The Speed Chess Championship rolls on. Don't go anywhere. When we return, one plus one action. Artemia versus Grishuk. We'll be right back.
eight of the most elite Chess 960 players on the planet are set to clash in the FIDE World Fisher Random Chess Championship quarterfinals beginning October 4th and ending October 6th, played exclusively on Chess.com. It's a game where creativity is king and memorization is impossible, and only one player will earn the right to call themselves the king of Fisher Random. Vladimir Fedoseyev, Ali Reza Faruja, Wesley So, Fabiano Caruana, Peter Spidler, Jan Nepomniyashi, Vidit Gujarathi, and Hikaru Nakamura. These players will take center stage as they attempt to outwit and outclass each other in a chess variant that many consider to be the game in its purest form. The FIDE World Fisher Random Chess Championship quarterfinals will be an event like no other. With over $350,000 in prizes up for grabs, it is the biggest prize fund for any event in online chess history. Will you tune in to witness who moves on from the quarterfinals to join Magnus Carlsen in Oslo? Tune in on the first weekend of October on Chess.com TV and Twitch.tv slash chess. It's the FIDE World Fisher Random Chess Championship Organized by DuneDayS and Chess.com. And as we get set now for the final segment of this incredible match between two of the top players uh, in Russia, Artemia versus Grishuk, we first take a moment to obviously make a shout-out to the video you just saw, the world Fisher Random Chess Championship quarterfinals will be happening this weekend. We're going to be deciding who the players are. Go ahead, show them the pawn. Show them the fancy pawn. Wait, we don't have the camera. But okay, there's a fancy face on the pawn. You no big deal. That. No Let big deal. My fault. We're just super excited. Let's remind everybody of the eight players that have their faces pasted to pawns. Fedoseyev, Svidler, Napomniyashi, Karwana, So Nakamura, Vidit, and Faruja. I can't wait for this weekend. I know you're pumped. Uh, but before we get to it, we have Bullet. We have a one-game match. We have a thriller. We have seven hours plus of Speed Chess Championship. Two matches in one day. Some said it couldn't be done. But it's proved they've been oh, proven it's being wrong. Done. They Those are being naysayers. Wrong. Incorrect. And what does Grishuk need to do to prove uh, to prove Artemiev wrong that he's not going to win the match here? Right now, it's just he just doesn't seem to be as sharp converting in critical moments. We've seen Sasha play for several years in the format. Yep. He normally uses the increment as well as anybody. Despite getting himself in time pressure a lot, he tends to convert when he's better. Today, there's just been a lot of missed opportunities for the uh, the veteran from Russia. Maybe he remembers his match last year against Jan Kristaps Duda, where he was well ahead and Duda came back and won. So maybe yep. he's like, I'll be a little bit behind and I'm going to uh, kind of come back and be the talk of the town. But on a serious note, uh, Grishuk needs to convert because as we were just talking about during our break, it seems that Grishuk has kind of botched three, four victorious positions and right. just Maybe even lost some of those games. Yep. Whereas for Artemiev, when he's getting good positions, he's putting Grishuk away. At least that's how it seems. So yep. right now, he's only down one game. It's still a toss-up in my eyes. And this first game, you know, just get get on a roll. That's what you yep. really need to that's do. Get in the groove. Do. The games will be beginning here any moment, and uh, we will have commentary for when they start. We are we are waiting. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm uh, just anxious to see whether Grishuk can uh, can find himself here in the fastest portion. But obviously, Artemiev, he's here for a reason. He was invited for a reason. Yep. Rising star. If you are one of the 7,000 viewers with us, don't go anywhere. We're getting for a thriller. And again, the World Fisher Random Chess Championship opening ceremony will be right after this for the quarterfinals event. So after the bullet segment, we will have interviews, and then we will move right into uh, an opening ceremony selection like we've never done here going to be a blast so stick around don't go in or stick with us here for the next couple hours all right all right and here we have a little caracon looking position but from the Kali and white is just trying to gain space on the queen side right now we've talked about the c5 square where in several of the games the knight on d2 has gone to b3 the pawn on a4 has gone to a5 and white tries to gain space and um well queen b3 in this case here what's the point of queen b3 uh, I don't know, but I do look at the uh, the graph there above us, and we actually have the heads have flip flopped now, and then back and forth. Well, that'd be a scary image. And if back and forth, right? They're flip flopping all over the place right now. If they so switch heads in their bodies. Yeah, the, uh, the odds can't seem to continue to predict based on our pre match predictions. So uh, anyway, exciting to see that. All right. Um, well, answered our question. The queen went to a three. That was part of the plan, taking over the dark squares. Mm -hmm. 
and well, black is very solid. If you ever play b4, you'll have this weakness on the c3 square, so that would be uh, kind of a too quick of a decision, I think. Time advantage for Grishuk as well. Yeah. Small, but still. Um, 10 sec 13 seconds now, it's right. definitely adding up, and he's just pushing forward here. Okay, I thought he would just maintain the tension, but no, he wants to trade and play a5. Ooh, I like that, actually. And, uh... Just solid. A, a small edge for white. Yeah, very, very solid. The knight is better for white than black. Now the, the a6 pawn. Mm -hmm. And b4 is certainly something to consider. We've seen this structure several times with yeah. the single isolated pawn versus the black pressure on the b file. Well, I like that he's left the pawn b2 because he can put his knight on b4 at some moment just to close yeah. down the b file and attack a6. So ro he'll go rook e1, rook a1. And this is going to be problematic. Yeah, I don't know that Grishuk can hold this one. We'll see if uh, our team, if one of the few games that we really felt that he missed a win was one in a very similar structure where he was white. And, okay, Grishuk finds a way to defend the pawn for now, but isn't, okay, I thought knight b4 was coming. It may come next if you make a trade. Yeah, sort of a sad position for the black knight on b8. I was going to point that out before that it was just a very passive piece relative to white's active knight. And that's honestly what it takes to get an advantage in, in this yep. top level is just having the superior pieces. The rook on b6, passive, defending the a6 pawn. The rook on a1, active, hitting that a6 pawn. And now look at um, Artemia playing on both sides of the board. He can play pawn g4 to g5 at the right moment and swing his king into g4 mm. and win this uh, h4 pawn. So pawn's I like one that idea a lot. But I also like that both sides have been just completely neck and neck here, right? Very close position. We've seen this structure a few times, so that's a nice uh, appropriate little tip in terms of how we define that for uh, those wondering what's the real difference between an open and closed position. There you have it. But, um, okay, now Grishuk has to sacrifice that pawn. The position opening up quickly here, but it may be bad. E6 and Rook F7 is a huge threat. Yep. Uh, I think uh, Artemiev looking to extend his lead here. We could have our first two-game lead of the match if this one goes the young Russian's way. And it, it looks, looks like, like it like, should yep. go his way, but strange things have The second I thought 95 happened. was a mate. Um, Luckily at the B3 square. Yeah, but knight D6 and rook D7 is yep. actually mate. Yep. Okay, the king tries to run. Um, knight D5 to go rook C7 check. Okay, he chose to do this. This also works. You need to play the rook to E2. I, oh. He takes h3. Uh, can you get away with this? Doesn't look like it. He's sacrificing. He's going to try. Try to hold on with the h pawn, but. Uh, nah, knight f2's no, knight f2 next move. You're dreaming. Knight f2, very nice. Rook b1 check is not going to do anything. Artemiev shows that he may be the favorite here in the fastest segment. We're going to find out, right? We didn't really know who would be better here, but we do know we have our first two game lead of the match. Again, until this point, neither player has ever been up by two games. So that's exact. That's how close this has been. And, uh, wow. We have this position again. It seems very odd. The bishop goes to e3, blockading the bishop on f1 in. But as we saw in that other game, he went for 95, g3, bishop g2 at the right moment. And um, just trying to make use of the space. Strange line. So yeah. This is just a strange position. Yeah. I think it is, um, you know, it's a known position where white is playing for the extra space. The great knights compared to this bishop on c8 especially, great bishop on g2. And you'll see this rook on h1 likely go to, I was going to say d1, but with all these trades, I'm not sure it's going to get there in time. Yeah, it's, you know, it's active for white. And if you castle, you're kind of discombobulated there on the queen side. Knight c6 ideas look good. Rook h to d1 looks good. Um, and the a6 pawn is still a target. So I do prefer White's position in these lines. And the knight can always go to d3. In any kind of Catalan structure, having the knight on d3 is typically a pretty good piece, protecting yep. b2 and even allowing the pawn to go to b4 later. And a6 remains weak, especially with the pawn on a4, uh, b4. Okay, knight d7. I wonder if you're going to think about bishop c6, but that just might be a fancy trade on something like king e7. So probably knight d3 first. And then, ooh, knight c6. So he gives, gives up, up the, pawn. the b2 pawn. Knight a4. Four? Is that his knight idea? Knight a4 or knight e4, rook c1, threatening knight a4. Mm -hmm. Okay. So keeping the options between e4 and a4 alive. He's up huge, huge amounts, amounts of time, time. on yeah, the Yeah, this clock. is actually, I mean, I'm very impressed with how Grishuk has done Yeah, this has by far been the, the best game we've seen him have start to finish for a little while anyway. So is knight a4 the move here? Rook to b1 is also tempting. Just saying that your bishop on b7 moves into a vulnerable spot. Uh, I'm not sure which one is better, but I, I think he should just play quickly. 
it sounds you know obvious. You're playing bullet, play quickly. But the point is, his time advantage is his biggest asset in this position. And he's still up, despite this huge think right here. Still up six, five seconds. So, ooh, going for d6. Take on c5. Hmm. What? Why? Knight d3? Uh, that must be the idea. I mean, he's but this, losing yeah. e2 otherwise. Yeah, but now rook b8. And there's no way rook black b8 guards rook c8, and there's nothing. Just should be equal. Yeah. Up a little bit on the clock, but that's his only advantage left. So something didn't go well there. No. Um, should probably be a draw, but now you're already now all of a sudden for the first time of the day we have uh, the gamesmanship conversation starting right in the Aronian Ferruja match that was a common storyline because Aronian was up so much. He almost blundered a pawn on h5. He pushed it there very early. Ah, but still, right. But Aroni was up so much, right, he wanted to take time off the clock to prevent the comeback. Yeah. We're, for the first time, we actually have a lead for someone, and so we're, you know, you would consider Knight whether of he four. should continue. Knight of four. Though. Knight of four is going to be... Knight of four, knight c5, you still... No, then you have rook h7 check. Wow. I mean, I don't know how big the advantage might have been, but it looked like an opportunity to play on. Let's bring up the analysis board and check that out, actually. Knight f4. There's knight f8, but then, then rook again, a7 rook, a, rook a7 wins the cheap one. Although you can bring the knight back to d7. It looks a little uncomfortable, but I guess it holds. Yeah, okay. So they settle on the draw. Yep, so now we have another right. isolated queen pawn position. Artemiev on the white side. This was the first game of the entire match, right? It was the isolated queen pawn. Yeah. And Only 22 minutes remaining, though, so still plenty of time. I mean, Grishuk himself has suffered the fate of being up two games with only six minutes left yep. and actually lost that match last year to young Christoph Duda. So uh, certainly this is plenty of time for either player to, to make a comeback or hold on. But Yeah, Grishuk is not getting wins. That's the real problem. Yep, I, I not converting on better positions, period. I'm not even sure I remember the last time he won a game. They drew a bunch of times, and then it seems like Artemio has been winning since then. Yeah. But this this is a good type of position to try to win in a bullet game. I feel like this decision by Artemiev to um, you know play against the IQP. But right now it's like these look at these bishops staring down at the king side. Mm -hmm. Just feels like a nice setup for Black. Yeah, Bishop c5 kick that queen away. Yeah, but now I'm starting to wonder if there's tactic coming. You move the knight here, Bishop on f6, Knight g5. Uh, okay. Rook c1, put the knight on e2, I think, and then play knight g5. Well, now he said, I'm listening to you, Danny. Not going to let it happen. I like it. So we get a trade. Bishop trade, takes Trade. The bishop should retreat, I think. Or rook takes e7. Okay, I took it. I think bishop. he was just a little bit, you know, a little afraid. I get afraid, too. Bishop e7. Now knight g3. No, knight d4. The bishop backs up. There's a seventh rank happening, and yeah, I like it. I don't like laying that. Bishop c8 here. Okay. Yep. You still got bishop d6 coming next, so... Maybe knight b5 is a move White should consider. Yeah. Stop bishop d6, hit a7. Knight b5 looks like a very good... And if a6, you might even have knight a7. Who knows? Yep. <sighs> what the heck? Bishop uh, bishop d6 loses the d5 pawn at the end of this. Yep. So he just goes I like bishop it. This, is, this is a strong idea. b7 is going to fall. You can even play h3 first if you want, just to force the But now knight g5. Oh, yeah. Maybe he should have played Ooh. h3 first. Whoa. Bishop h4. What? <laughs> Oh, and if Rook of one, Bishop F3 and Knight D2. Oh, oh you didn't see it. Knight D2. Very nice tactic. I think uh, he should have played the move H3 that we were talking about earlier. This was super awkward. But the Bishop gets trapped. Rook E4. Save it. Or Knight E4. Oh, Knight, knight 4 F3. Ah, uh, okay. Yep. Oh, but then Knight D6 or something. Actually, Knight E4 is probably Now you can better. play Knight E6. Oh, I thought he would have played Knight E6 there. What okay, is happening King H7. Here? Knight F5. Oh, no. Fork town. Oh, no. Unless there's something crazy. Grishuk's about to go down three games. He's losing this one. He should have played ninety six. No, knight takes doesn't do any. It doesn't do anything. Nothing at all. Oh man, he shakes his head. He's going down three games. There's nothing to it. Down a rook, and there's no tactics. Resign and move on. Right? You still have plenty of time to come back, but it's getting away from you. Getting away. We have new kids on the block, right? Yep. New Russian blood here, and uh, the youngster might be about to upset the speech chess championship veteran. And Alexander Grishuk. And Grishuk has not won since game 12. No wonder I couldn't remember. That's that is, We're now 19 games in. He hasn't won since game 12. And Seven games plus. In fact, maybe maybe uh, eight games now after that last one just finished. Yeah, it's been bad news for Grishuk. But wow. He still has chances. What is this knight on d7, knight on c6 situation? What is that? 
This looks terrible. <laughs> was it like a somehow a? I yeah, I don't get it. Maybe it's gonna turn out okay, but it looks very very strange. E six. Oh, Play E six. Do it. Who cares about B two? Seriously. Play E six. There it is. That's what I'm talking about. You That's take, what I'm talking about. Forget B2. Forget it. Yep. Just there keep you go. going. This get the how attack. you play for a win. This is perfect bullet. Grishuk needs a victory to get back in this thing. I mean, Captain Obvious Dan, right? But we know. All right. But the, the but this is the kind of attack. You got 94 coming. Yep. Castles, bishop to G5. Put a piece on F6. Let's go, right? The C7 pawn's hanging if you just want to steal a pawn right. at some point. Knight G5 options. So what's okay. he thinking about here? Okay, bishop, okay, bishop b5. b5, actually. That's nice. Now, I think, I think just castle. Oh, wait. You don't want to allow castles long. So take c7 now? I was thinking also 94 to c5. But okay, he just... Ooh. Oh! Duh. Give me that. 94 now. Oh, but g2's hanging. Yeah, but c7 hangs. Mm, yeah, I don't know which... So castling, I think, is smart. Now knight d4. Okay. e6, c6, knight b5. Some kind of queen a3. Knight b5. Oh. Knight b5 was just winning... A pawn. Well, c6, you couldn't take on a7 because you're not going to be in trap. Ah, okay, yeah. But so a4 is always a nice move. Please I like thought I could take him queen c5. Okay, yeah, but this is nice. You have a5 coming and queen c5. Maybe queen c5 first so you can threaten queen a7. Yep. I think that might have been a little trickier, but he goes for a5. So that bishop on d5 is also kind of trapped, so e4 is a, might be a threat. But after e4, there might be c5 for black. It's getting or c5 it's right away. It's happening anyway, right? And if you, even if you pin it, King moves off, and you re renew the threat. Knight of four. Artemiev has uh, wiggled his way out yet again. Yep. Grishuk has had a consistent time advantage at the first couple stages of these bullet games, but still uh, has lost all of them. Ooh, knight of three to d4, but the knight's going to come to c5 for black. That's not fun. Artemiev working it again. Yep. Amazing right now. We want to we want to see the. Uh, the close finish here, but Kershuk is going to have to breathe life into his own chances. Yeah, it's not going well for him at all. Black's up a pawn. There's a pass C pawn, which means the queen are... A lot of time could come off the clock in this game right here. This is one of those danger games. Danger, Alexander Grishuk. Uh, Rook B6 was meant by knight A4. That was a yep. cool tactic. Whoa. Whoa. What? what? Oh, he has Rook C1. Oh, again. that's nasty. But Queen D2 does or Queen D1 doesn't matter because he's got Queen D4. So Rook takes B3, there's Rook yeah, C1. I think, I think he's fine. He's got Queen D4 check. Okay, he's just oh. running away. Okay, I guess, uh, ooh, very nice. That he was can good. force the Queens off the board. Black is winning because these two pawns are super fast. So what are you trying to get a pass pawn real quick? You know, go F4, eventually try to get F5 in and push those pawns? Very nice. This is this is not bad by Grishuk because he's forcing, forcing the king to become open if you ever want to play B5. Right. Queen A2? Whoa. Uh -oh. Rook a3, rook d4, queen b5. I think this could be the match right here. Queen c4. Black is playing so accurately. Artemiev up on the clock, about to win and take a four-game lead. It's queen takes d1 and it's over. Yep. Give me oh a queen. Oh my gosh. That's one of those games that's a bit of a backbreaker. Grishuk now down four points total with only 15 minutes remaining. The young guns have come to play. He just can't buy a victory. I mean, yeah. that was, that game he didn't really deserve a victory, but he tried to get things um, pretty crazy there. He sat in exchange. He had opportunities earlier, and I wonder if he'll, you know, if he'll recognize that. Obviously, we'll have conversations with them after the match and ask him if he feels like he, uh, you know, let some of the games get away from him. You know, um, early on, if he if he even sees it the way we do, he may not even be aware that he missed some clear wins. Like this night before game comes to mind, yeah. right? Um, but okay, obviously we know Grishuk loves the speech as championship, so he's not going to go down without a fight. We'll see if he can pull it together right now. But but wow. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say anything because we both, you know, we're not rooting for anybody, but we know Sasha well. He's been competing and trying very hard over the last bunch of years. He really prepares for the matches, and um, this one's just not going his way, and it feels like he's had so many good chances. You know, it's just... Yeah, so, so many good chances. Our Timmy of, though, a stone-cold killer, has hardly uh, hardly moved, honestly, <laughs> during the match. He's hardly, like, like physically, his body, yeah. he's hardly moved. Um, 
All right, well, uh, this game also looks really good for Artemiev, honestly. Good position for White. Not a ton of time left. Yeah, and this, you know, Grzyk needs to take this one somehow. But if you take on d6 and I take with my bishop on d6, then I'm happy. But if with this exchange here, the knight has a great blockade on d6. The knights are the best blockaders. They're very hard, hard to dislodge. Um, and if you ever take on f5, I take back with my knight. Now it's even worse, obviously, because you're walking to a fork. But in general, I can just take with my knight on f5 and then just continue blockading your pawn in dark square. You have a light square bishop. Wow. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just looking at chat, getting the hype up. There's some kind of sore I got my arm. Keep rubbing it, just sh sharing how I feel with everyone. <laughs> um, I don't know, but th this to me, I look at this position. Yeah, you highlighted Black's got the setup with the blockade, but I just feel like this is a... Uh, this is a tough position to try to win within the next couple minutes. Yeah. Um, this is looking tougher and tougher for for Grishuk, and uh, time is running out. Ooh, second, don't take it. Cause queen takes d6. Oh, queen takes d6. d6. I was just it's saying sick, it. And he's just like, oh. Oh, no. He's falling apart. He's oh. falling apart. That might be the moment of the match right there. That was a backbreaker. And... Uh, I think I think we can pretty much call it after that. Yeah. So. Although, it was a five-game deficit for Ali Reza with about this much time left. Okay. Right. right? Well, he, but uh, still, it's just the momentum was totally different, right? It was eight games that had come to five games. Yeah. This is uh, one game headed into bullet. Now five games for Artemiev. Wow. And Artemiev is now bopping. Look at him. Yeah, he's enjoying it a little bit. He's uh, finally showing a little bit of emotion, recognizing that he's he's in a commanding position right now in the match. Just a beast right now. Can't be stopped. Won't be stopped. Can't stop. Won't stop. Can't touch this. <laughs> bah, nah, nah, nah. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, it's Ali Reza. Hanging out in the chat. Wait, what? I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> but we're glad he's here. Um, Wait, where did White's beef pong just go? Got stolen? Yeah, where'd it go? I like turned away <laughs> for a second. <laughs> Where'd the beef pong go? <laughs> <laughs> Everything about this is normal, but the beef pong's gone. And now it's starting to look bad. Once Knight C3 picks up an exchange. Oh, that Rook on 8's not... Actually... Deep. Not quite trapped though. Got eight seven and eight six. Ooh. No longer on the board though. So what's the situation here? The eight pawn's good. Is it even material? Wow, after all that's even material. There was like a weird imbalance. Things were all over the place. E five almost traps that bishop, but is H six to go to. So the bishop's closed off, but that A pawn is so strong. Yeah. Queen b3, going to be met by rook b8. Then e6. Knight takes c2, Oof. overwhelms the queen's defense. Grishuk is on full tilt here. I think when this one falls, it's... Uh... g5. Can you play g5 to remove that bishop from uh, the defense of e5? Take that pawn. Get a great bishop. Okay, now you can't go g5, of course. But again, this is... Uh, this is this is super tough. We could we could see a lot of time go off the clock here. Yep. Yeah, this is not good. Now E5's hanging. Such a strange finish to the match. This is this is the anti Aronian Ferruja match, right? Yeah. An eight game lead at one point for Levon Aronian ends in a single game victory that felt like he barely got away with it, right? Like the clock ended just in time for Aronian not to lose. Yep. Right? And in this case, it was uh, a very, very close match throughout. Before we got to bullet, neither player had ever led by more than one game, if you happen to just be joining us. And with that, uh, Grishuk has not won a single game in the final segment. Obviously, you see the score. It is now a six-point lead for Vladislav Artemiev. I can't wait for post-game interviews, I guess. I mean, it's going to be a little bit hard, right, uh, for uh, for Sasha Grishuk. We know how much he cares about this. But, uh, wow. Grandmaster Wesley So, Artemiev is an ultra killer, right? That's what I said. Yeah, he's uh, that was he's, my... he's ruthless. Maybe maybe Wesley's listening. Probably stole your line, <laughs> Wesley. You know, when we had a 
pick one of the players in this toss-up matchup, I was like, you know, I got to go with Artemiev. Yeah, you did. You did. And but we both thought it would be a closer than this. I thought Grishuk's experience would hold off. And to be fair, I think uh, I think there were a lot of games that could have gone the other way in the slower time controls. And uh, I wonder if at some point the wind went out of his sails when he just wasn't converting on yeah. several good positions. And uh, and if that if that had any kind of hangover effect to future games. So, But either way, we will catch up with the players in only eight minutes, so don't go anywhere. Let's remind everybody while we have them that the Fisher Random World Chess Championship opening ceremony is right after the interviews. Uh, we will have a fun little way of uh, deciding who plays who and who gets white first. So uh, the players will the players don't know because because nobody does. It's going to be a random drawing that's about to happen probably about 30 minutes exactly from now. We will know who's playing who. So don't go anywhere. Going to be a ton of fun. And uh, thanks for being here, all of you. It's been quite the day. Yep. And I see uh, Saba can't really see Tesli. Some of that says Artemia beat Hikaru in classical. That is true. In Gibraltar, when Artemia won the event, he beat many strong players. Mm -hmm. And well, it, you know, shouldn't come as too much of a surprise. Artemia was rated, you know, in the, in the high 27. Hey, there's a reason he got an invite. He didn't yeah. even qualify his way in. I mean, we invited him. We recognized, you know, the potential future of where this kid is headed, and uh, invited him. Obviously, he's uh, he's moved on here to the second round. So, amazing stuff. Eight and two since his last loss. Eight and two. He's just gone on a roll. Meaning six wins and four draws. Yep. He hasn't lost yep. in ten games. And that's the thing. Sometimes you know, there. This, let's say you make four draws or two wins and two losses. It just feels good to win a game. Mm -hmm. or just that taste of victory. And Grishuk hasn't tasted that in a, a long, long time. Yeah, too long. Too long for uh, my taste. And uh, doesn't look like he's going to get this one either. Is Rook takes E6 some kind of mate? It's happening. It's happening. Also, knight E2, knight F4 could be a slight problem. What is it? It's just mate. Check, Rook F6 and mate. He just no, resigns. No. Rook F6. No, no, it's mate. Rook F4. No, no it's mate on the board. <gasps> the knight holds the squares. <laughs> I didn't even realize the knight mated him. It was just mate. Rook <laughs> <laughs> E6 was just mate. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's mate. And you're like, oh, it's going to be mate. Ro With Rook F6 yeah, for yeah. I'm like overcomplicating yeah. it. Wow. There you go. Oh, man. Oh, man. Thanks for being here, everybody. It's been quite the day. Um, well, there you have it. Vladislav Artemiev runs away with the match. The one moral victory we all have is that smarter chess was wrong. <laughs> we can all bond in that. You're so correct. Thank you for reminding me about yeah. that. <laughs> hey, uh, Giving Robert some ammunition. I, I can't wait to see Smarter Chess reply to that. But, I don't uh, know. How, by the way, to be fair to Matt, how does he make predictions when like our team has never played before, right? It's like it's super difficult. No experience. Don't give him any excuses. Oh, come on. You know? Um, the uh, – <laughs> There he is. The the sixty percent <laughs> the sixty percent favorite Alexander Grishuk according to our stats and honestly according to myself as well. That's the way I saw this match, to be fair. Uh, jokes aside, we're just teasing. Uh Artemia pulls an upset here. I mean, the problem is according to the seeds, he was not the underdog. He was the sixth seed coming in in terms of Fide Blitz rankings, and uh he does move on as the favorite. So with only five minutes left and a seven-point lead, we've officially pretty much called the match. Um, but like I said, don't go anywhere. The players will be with us soon. Interviews, Chuck Norris jokes. <laughs> we'll ask Alexander Grishuk why he calls Vladislav Artemiev the Chuck Norris of Russia. <laughs> That'll be a fun story. It'd be also hilarious if I just made that up. You know, if I was like, oh, he calls him that. Started a rumor. Isn't, isn't true. I would believe that you did something like that. I'm pretty positive I saw it in an article. By Peter Dockers. The one and only Peter Dockers. The one and only? Yeah. Mr. Dockers? Yeah, exactly. Correct pronunciation. Dockers. <laughs> Pretty good pants. Dockers. <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> I'm not doing this again. <laughs> Bishop takes oh, e4 is a threat because knight any 4 needs a defense of the d5 pawn. So you might want to play rook c8. There it is. All right. Just going to take that pony. Take it. But now what's he going to do? Ooh, now a movie you tend to want to play. Now rookie four. Sack the exchange. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. And then there's queen d5 at the end. Uh, no good. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. 
I've, I've been putting my back into it. It hurts. Bishop takes c4. Do it. No, but then rook takes f3. Put your back into it. I, I told you. I, I did. It hurts. So is the truth. According to <laughs> so ben funny. I haven't thought about that song in so long. <laughs> now it's like in your head. <laughs> oh, man. I, this is exactly what I thought was going to happen. Knight g5 As the check. The prophet once said, you can do it. Put your back into it. <laughs> King's on g4. <laughs> what? Uh, knight's coming to f6. It doesn't matter. King's going to run back to h3. I love the queen g2 move, though. Felt very Alpha Zero like. Yeah. Um, Knight well, G four though. Look at how dangerous these two pieces are. They're too good. Ooh, take that Knight on E five. Just do it. King there. I think he's gonna make a draw. The losing streak ends. Well, that's good. <laughs> Some great insights there. Yep. And uh, I'm going to guess our next game is the last game. Probably time for one more. There we go. Much to the chagrin of Alexander Grisha. Who would probably like to resign the match. Yep. As we know. I, so I was thinking about that when you're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, it was interesting to talk to him well, after the match. to be fair, the last time he brought up the idea that we allowed them he to was resign in the, winning the match, side. he was in the winning yeah. It was Yeah. So not not quite the same. <laughs> and of course, every game is worth a little bit of cash money. So, uh, not as much money as the each game is worth throughout the event, right? With every with every round, the uh, amount of prizes go go significantly higher. Um, but uh, but still, every game worth a little bit of money at this point. Yep. Maybe our Timmy of Angershirt can buy some nice wall, nice wall art. <laughs> they do have very uh, white walls there. Yep. So black's going to go h5 at some point, knight f8 to h7, knight to g5 kind of stuff. White is going to open up the c file, try to make progress there. That's, that's my insight for this game. That's deep. <laughs> so deep. Let's go rook c1 next. Queen a5. Oh, okay, I thought queen a5 would have been a nice little... Yeah, but now queen c5 meets, okay, so knight e6. Stops that, but you have knight f4 coming. True. Hmm. There's knight f4. God, right. he hasn't lost. Vladislav has not lost in a very long time. He just doesn't know how to lose. He doesn't know how. Can't blame him for not losing. Right? Oh, that knight's going to g3. Put a pony there. I like it. There's absolutely no attack for black, and the C-file is white for the taking. He should sack the queen for a rook and bishop just to bring this thing to a close. I mean, I would have been down for it. Okay, here comes rook C8. No, he's got to guard the B7. F5. Pawn. Bishop when... takes A6 as possible, though. Ooh. It was, anyway. Yeah, that would have been nice. Uh, maybe Still it hanging. wasn't. Bishop, bishop E5. But then that bishop Ooh. might get trapped. Yeah. Ooh, F5 is also eight. an idea. I h three is hanging, but b two to beat take on b three. <clears throat> Up a pawn, but this is the last game for sure. Ten seconds left. The official game clock has pretty much aligned with that. No way this game is uh, ending here. <laughs> Smarter chess. Vladislav has not lost since Wesley so joined the game chat when it was six to six. That that <laughs> could be a uh, a real stat. You never know. Yeah, you never yeah. know with smart chess what's real and what's just what's imaginary. real and what's not, right? What he's tracking, what he's not. Does he work for the NSA? Does he not? Questions we ask around the uh, old chess dot com office on a regular. It's a draw, um, and with it, the draw brings us. To a close here. The match is officially over. It has been here in a surprising uh, runaway performance in the bullet. Um, I don't know why the next game started. I think they will abort it. And uh, we have officially reached our close with the score being what you see before you. 16-9 to in favor of Vlad Vladislav Artemiev, the young blood take it home. We will take a very quick break. When we return, interviews, then Fisher Random World Chess Championship quarterfinal opening ceremony. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
A premium membership at chess.com will help you improve your game with full access to a powerful set of learning tools. Unlimited tactics let you practice like a master with more than 50,000 puzzles to challenge you at every level. Our library of interactive chess lessons created by master coaches will enhance every aspect of your game. And after each game you play, the computer analysis feature will give you feedback on every move you play, turning every game into a chance to learn. And that's not all. Premium benefits also include unlimited tournaments, video lessons, the opening explorer, and much, much more. Upgrade now to take your game to the next level. And we are back now with the 2019 Speed Chess Championship. Our two players have just joined us. Thank you again, Vladislav and Alexander, for a great match. Uh, Sasha, we wanted to start with you. It, it seemed to us as commentators that there were a lot of games in the early portion, both the five-minute and the three-minute, that just that just kind of got away from you, where you were pushing and maybe had missed opportunities. Did did you feel that way, that you were missing chances to convert on, on winning games, or, or did you not see it like that? Uh, whom do you ask? Uh, you, Alexander. We thought that you had some games that you were winning early on, and it, it seemed like you lost a little bit of... Uh, of uh, energy not not converting on some games that you should have won earlier mm, no I, I didn't feel like that. okay well um what did you see your chances were headed into bullet you were down a game against vladislav and what were your thoughts before the match started as far as how you would fare in the one once portion no i thought i'm a huge underdog but i didn't think it will be that bad got it vladislav did and you think before the whole match I thought I was a clear underdog so yeah my goal was to play better than Elina Danielian against Nepomniachtchi <laughs> well you did that just barely just barely um by seven points huh? not yeah. barely <laughs> I'm kidding <laughs> um Vladislav did you consider yourself a favorite uh, I think that uh, this match was uh, interesting, but still we do uh, many mistakes. And also I think that the first part of uh, our match was is more um, correct because we have a, a long blitz control. And, uh, okay, Alexander won this uh, little match and uh, maybe it's normal, but okay, late... Uh, Mm, we, we played also uncompromising and uh, it was a real battle, I think. Yeah. But, but okay, I, I think that in this match we not have a favorite, my opinion. And I think that it's, it's a true. Uh, Vladislav, did you figure that you would be the big favorite in Bullet because you seem to you know, take charge in the uh, quickest time control and won most of the games there. Mm, I I not remember every game, but uh, uh, when when we finished the match, uh, it was a real uh, <laughs> crazy cinema. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, early we played uh, is good sometimes. But uh, not all games. Mm, it's a, a difficult analysis uh, because very many games, uh, all uh, three hours, and uh, mm, maybe maybe interesting moment uh, was uh, I have uh, white pieces. Uh, uh, Alexander can play it in knight h2. I missed my pawn on h2 mm. when I played queen c3. Yes, it's a terrible mistake. But uh, Alexander also not C, I think, and uh, I played G3, and uh, later we played as normal. Yes, so it's yeah. fun, I think, and uh, I hope that uh, fans uh, uh, look our match with uh, smile, smiles. Yeah. Well, uh, you, thank uh... you, thank you, my opponent, and uh, great match. But okay, I think that uh, I not was uh, is better than Alexander. Maybe I was uh, more lucky today. Mm, it's uh, equal match, I think. Yeah. 
Well, we appreciate that. And Alexander, a question for you. You, you. you told Peter Dawkers in an interview that you thought Vladislav was a Chuck Norris. <laughs> of uh, No? No, I said that when we were playing for the World Team Championship. So why do you why do you say he's the Chuck Norris of uh, of Russian chess? Well, I mean, he's cool and strong. And... <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Well, yes, I, I can't say too about Alexander. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alexander, we know it didn't yeah. go. Um, your way this year but we really appreciate it we love having you and um you've been a, you've been a fan favorite for a lot of people on chess.com for a long time so again thank you thank you so much and and uh really appreciate it vladislav before we let you go uh the quarterfinals are now complete you will be facing levon aronian this was the last match so how do you think you stack up against the armenian yes yes fortunately of course the, that i go <laughs> Uh, in the second round, uh, but okay, um, I don't know who will be my opponent, uh, but uh, probably it will be uh, such strong player uh, as. Uh, it'll so, be it'll be Aronian. Um, it'll be Aronian in the second round. Ah, Aronian, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is interesting match, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Sasha, who uh, you got? Sasha, who who's gonna win that match, Aronian or Artemiev? No, Vladislav is a favorite, but okay. let's see who will win. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, anyway. congratulations to Vladislav and uh, thanks uh, to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you both, guys. Thank and really you, enjoy your night. We know it's late there. And congratulations again, Vladislav. And thank you again, Alexander. Okay. Well, Bye, guys. Okay, thank you and uh, all the best. Everybody. Thank you. Well, uh, there we have it. Our players are uh, checking out now. We've got uh, the quarterfinals complete. As we can see, the bracket has officially reached the second stage with Vladislav Artemiev defeating Alexander Grishuk by a final score of 16-9, to 9, as you can see right in front of you there. So uh, anyway, obviously a little bit tough for, for Sasha. Of course, uh, we asked him. I didn't want to dig, dive deeper into the earlier stages of the match because he probably doesn't even know yet that he was winning in several games. Um, and that's okay, right? Obviously, it's a, it's a tough situation. But somebody from Russia had to move on. It was Artemiev this time. And uh, as Sasha said, he's uh, the Chuck Norris of Russian chess because <laughs> he's strong and he's cool. Well, and he also proved himself very worthy of the invite to the Speed Chess Championship. Yeah, he did. He made his mark. I don't think many people expected this match to be as lopsided in score as it was. Yep. And Artemiev, ever modest, was saying that, you know, it was an equal match. I was lucky. And, uh, you know, that's just a lot of modesty. I think that... Yep. Um, as he was holding games being more and more resourceful, they definitely got under Grishuk's skin. Yep. He ended up um, you know, f faltering, but first in the three-minute segment, then the one minute was a domination, really a master class by Artemiev. And, you know, he said that he's an interesting match with Aronian. I totally agree. Yeah. I, right now I couldn't tell you who I'd favor based on that performance. Uh, Grishuk um, thinks uh, Vladislav's the favorite. I, I honestly might have to agree. Because yeah. what Artemi excuse me, Artemi showed in the bullet today was much better than what Levon showed in the bullet against Ferugia, and I don't think that Artemiev is going to be down seven games at any point in that match. So yeah. uh, if Aldereza almost came back and won that, that it smells like trouble for Levon. Okay. Well, it was super interesting, and uh, the Speed Chess Championship first round is officially in the books, and it's time for us to uh, to make our way from one chess event to another with this opening ceremony that you're about to watch, the World Official Random Chess Championship quarterfinals officially begin. Uh, we're going to take a very, very short break so that we can get set up when we come back. We will have all of the players before us. Believe it or not, they're all just waiting outside the door. They're just going to come in here, all the players, and we're going to tell them who they're going to play. So don't go anywhere. The World Official Random Chess Championship opening ceremony begins in just a few minutes.